but I think you got development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. With a rocket or whatever, but incredibly fast, you know, almost the direction. They were too fast to be an airplane. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Can you said there's lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's up, guys? This show is live. We are streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and DLive, and also Periscope. I guess Periscope is back. I got a memo back in the day that said Periscope was being discontinued, but everybody's still using it. So I shut it off and was like, okay, I guess that's dead. And it's still running. I guess they just renamed it. I don't know. Anyway, so we're streaming on Periscope, which is on Twitter as well. So, oh, also, we're streaming on the Fringe FM, actual digital radio. And this show's live, did I mention? And, you know, if you're new here, I get it. What is this? What am I looking at? What am I watching? Well, this is the show where we talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what those things are, of course. Aliens. Conspiracy. The paranormal. The government. Academia. The 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down, and uh, it's uh, it is strange that uh, the more we watch, uh, you know, the news cycles and propaganda and all the things that we talk about on this show, the more it becomes apparent that there are certainly some things that are verboten that you cannot really discuss because they get censored. I, I mean, it's it's. Pure and simple, it's just things get censored, things get taken down from the internet. And, you know, as we've been doing this for, for a number of years now, it, it just seems to be getting worse. It, it used to be, you guys remember the old days, for those of you that are young enough to remember when the internet began, and there were all those those crazy websites, right? Like, not just like, you know, crazy websites, but there were these websites that, they, they, you know, they had these black backgrounds and like this really like gaudy green text, you know, kind of like, um, like, like it, it was almost like, a, I don't know. It, 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 I mean, they looked bad, right? I, they still look bad. And I, and I guess some of them are still up there. You guys remember the old GeoCities and, and that sort of thing? Like there used to be all kinds of just ridiculous information up on the web. And now it just seems like it's um, some of the fringe stuff is just getting trimmed and trimmed and trimmed. And, and not just that, right? Not just some of those old websites. You know, you can still find them here and there. Some of the, some of the websites that are still up. 
But uh, the the new ones, right? Uh, is you know like 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 mine. You go to troubledminds.org. By the way, uh, that w- I did say we're streaming live, and I want to point out that we you can call in at any time during the show, and the phone number to reach us is seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. That's seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. You can uh, get the phone number and the Discord link at troubledminds.org. That's the official website of this show. And also, please join the Discord at fringe dot fm slash chat that will get you a direct invite uh discord is a chat client it's a voice client it's uh, fantastic by the way you can live stream on there and share your screen and do all kinds of amazing things that you didn't used to be able to do back in the day which is what we were talking about back in the day uh in these these amazing websites right where you could find all kinds of information and and i think you know pretty much with everything on the internet even i think it's even more funny now but you know back in the day let's say that you know they had these websites that had the black backgrounds and the gaudy green text and they'd have like all this information about aliens right and things like this and you're like what is going on with this right like like this stuff can't be real right i was back then i was kind of just starting to read michael sala and stuff like that right and uh, I was like, what? Like, is this stuff real? Like, come on. Like, it seemed like a bunch of, um, you know, kind of bad fan fiction, if you know what I'm saying. And so, like, the more, the more you dig into it, the more you're like, I don't know. I, like, what do I think now? What, what, what do I think now? As things change, right, the Internet changes, a lot of that stuff moved to YouTube, okay? And there was that whole YouTube boom where it became the thing, right? Well, now a lot of those things have been taken down off of YouTube as well. And, and I've seen it. I've seen it happen, like, in real time. Like I said, a few years now we've been doing the show. We used to be able to easily get information. And now it seems that not only the old website's down, for whatever reason, it could be, you know, not a nefarious censorship thing. It could be people got tired of paying for the hosting on their website and uh, it was costing them money and so they shut it down, you know? I mean, that stuff does happen. But there's, you know, the stuff on YouTube that doesn't seem to be as, you know, it's free to leave your stuff up on YouTube, right? So you put it up there and forget about it and you never have to come back and pay them to keep it up or any of that. But I'm finding that uh, some things that used to be available on YouTube are just not there anymore. And part of that is tonight I was doing a, a bunch of uh, reading, reading into a particular incident uh, that happened in Zimbabwe. This happened in uh, 1994 in um, Africa. And at a little school, there was a little school, uh, we'll get into that story, but that's what we're going to talk about tonight. There was a supposedly an alien encounter, all right, with school children, actual school children that uh, they said they saw aliens. They said they actually saw them land and uh, do the rest of this. So I don't know. I mean, we'll get into some of that story and some of the details of that. But but most notably, I think as we start the conversation tonight, it's it seems to me that uh, these things are disappearing from the internet and not just, um, you know, disappearing like uh, you're gone, like, you know, you can find it. Uh, you just find kind of recycled versions of it kind of done by the BBC or, you know, recycled versions of it done by, you know, NBC News or things like this. And, you know, it was, uh, I know Google's been messing around with their algorithms like they always do, like we always talk about it's part of the censorship game. But uh, it, it truly makes me believe, you know, it, it used to be kind of tongue in cheek when we first started this show. It was like, okay, yeah, you know, haha, this is the show where you talk about all the things you're not allowed to talk about. But I'm not so sure anymore. I, I think I think there are certain things, you know, that we've kind of discussed that are just not allowed. I mean, sure you can, but uh, maybe you don't get the algorithmic boost that others might get. You get shadow banned. I don't know. I, like, I don't know how this, how this stuff works because clearly a lot of it's, you know, a, a proprietary information. Uh, the algorithms with the... Uh, the rest of uh, the the technocrats and you know the big the big tech and all this stuff. So I mean, nobody knows exactly how it works, but I think you can infer quite a lot by just seeing what disappears from the internet. And of course, that means you have to have you know a memory that goes back further than a twenty four hour news cycle, <laughs> which actually ends up uh, exactly like we were talking about. Is that uh, you know I have a, a memory that goes back longer than that, and I remember those old websites where it was just I mean they were discussing all kinds of crazy stuff on the internet, right? Like Majestic Twelve and like uh, you know the the, uh, the the suicide by the first Secretary of Defense. What was his name? Forrestal, I think. I mean, like there's a there was an unbelievable amount of like conspiracy theory out there. And it seems like it's it's kind of getting trimmed back, uh, kind of like like you would uh, you know 
trim the bushes in the front yard sort of situation. <laughs> they used to be out of control. And now after a little bit of uh, pruning work, you know, uh, from the technocrats, now now things are, are, are a little bit more in line with, you know, what they allow. And, you know, we've, we've said this before, they, they have their dirty tricks where they can just bury something at the bottom of a search index. And you'll never find it if you don't have, you know, the exact URL to type in. And some of these URLs, if you remember the old days, like I said, GeoCities, you guys remember that? They'd be like, uh, you know, uh, my Mike's webpage dot geocities dot one seven six four three dot com or something like this, right? It was like there's no way anybody's remembering that. So if that get if that gets buried at the bottom of a search index and it's talking about aliens or some of these other weird conspiracies that we you know we touch on in this show, uh, that stuff it does get redacted from history. And so think about it. So again, this is not the topic of the show tonight. We're going to get to aliens and this uh, this alien encounter in a little bit. But uh, I just wanted to point out, it, it's important to note that uh, it, it's on the top of my mind right now because I spent a bunch of time here going through and trying to find some of these old um, YouTube videos and other things. And it seems like they've been taken down. Uh, you know, when they get in some capacity, they get regurgitated, right? Like this, like we're going to talk about it tonight only because we've never talked about this one. And somebody asked in the discord a couple days ago, by the way, have you joined the discord troubledminds.org? Click the discord link. Somebody asked in the discord a couple days ago, uh, what, what I thought was the most, one of the most compelling, um, you know, UFO cases. And it came to mind that it was that, uh, the aerial school, right? In Zimbabwe. So, I was like, okay, uh, and not only that, just recently, like three days ago, it resurfaced in the, in, in, on the BBC, in, in the news cycle, right? So it, it popped up, and I was like, okay, cool. I guess, I guess we're going to talk about this tonight, because it's one of those things we've never really discussed in depth, but uh, notably, a lot of the information seems to have been pruned, right, trimmed out, uh, maybe sent to the bottom of the search engines. And I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's happening with this and why. Like, you got to think, right? Like, like in, in the larger term of things, if aliens is such a, um, you know, verboten topic and you're not allowed to, to discuss these things, you know, kind of unofficially, right? You're not allowed to discuss them unofficially, let's say. Then um, now why, why, why is this stuff disappearing from the Internet? Why is, you know, you go into some of these old uh, research sites that you've had. I've got bookmarks from, from the old days, right? Like I saved my bookmarks from like years and years and years ago. Some of this crazy stuff. And it's just not there anymore. It doesn't exist. And so uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think. But anyway, that's my little uh, intro diatribe because, I, because it's, I ran into it tonight. Kind of a brick wall of sorts. Um, and so I don't know. Is it, uh, is it basically rewriting history in the context of what the technocrats desire that's what's uh, that's what's on my mind tonight so we, we can kind of keep that in the back of our mind as we as we discuss the rest of this which uh, which is this we'll start with this um, and again if you want to be a part of the show we are taking your phone calls all night at 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 all right so after my ramble here that was quite a ramble sometimes uh, sometimes it's quite a ramble sometimes it's not but uh, tonight was quite a ramble but let's let's get on to this now, this is from the BBC, all right? Now, now interestingly, uh, like I was saying, it, it's, it resurfaced in the news for some reason, and I don't exactly know why. So this is, this is the article I'm looking at. I'm going to link it in all the chats, and you guys can, as usual, as always, track down my sources so you see that I'm not making these things up. Uh, but here's, here's why it got, it got pushed back into the news cycle. So three days ago, this popped up. And uh, I'll just read uh, straight from the blurb here because uh, it's like a tiny little thing. It's kind of a way to recycle their video, I guess. Um, so anyway, uh, right here. It's from three days ago on the BBC. In 1994, 60 children at aerial school in Ruwa, Zimbabwe, said they'd seen a UFO and aliens with big eyes in bushland near their school playground. The story was reported around the world. A BBC crew were among the first on the scene and spoke to pupils and teachers. There was also reports of strange lights and a craft in the sky in other parts of Zimbabwe, as well as Zambia and South Africa. Witness history looks back through archive witness accounts of the Ruwa school incident. And so this is, there's the link. There's a little video. Um, 
uh, well, we, we maybe play some of that in the third hour. But but point being is that uh, this is one we've never really talked about on this show. And as you know, I like to kind of keep it current and in the news cycle to, to do these shows. And so I thought, what better time? So not only is it re- regurgitated back into the news cycle through the BBC, but it's uh, we've never actually discussed this in in terms of an entire case. So let's uh, let's talk about it tonight. That's what we're doing. And uh, like I said, if you guys know anything about this or know some other uh, maybe maybe some of those old, you know what I mean, those black black background with the the gaudy green text websites that uh, has some information about this, I'd love to see it because. As you know, as we know, uh, as the, that old information gets washed out, washed off the Internet, and it gets replaced with stuff like this, um, it, it's hard to say uh, how much is lost in that translation, right? Because if I can't have access to the old information, the original stuff that was on those early, early Internet websites, um, basically I'm telling sort of a bastardized version of this, right? Meaning that uh, I only can tell you what I can find. And if I can't find it, well, then it didn't happen, right? And you see how 1984's Orwell, um, right, controls the future by controlling the past. So in any case, uh, that's what we're talking about tonight. So let's do it. Let's get to some of these. There's a lot of like good modern current articles about this, you know, within the last five, six, seven, eight years type thing, which is fine. That's all fine and well. I'm not complaining about that. But like I said, it's, uh, it did interest me. Like now here, I'll, I'll give you an idea of why uh, I'm talking about this. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Uh is it here? No, it's not here. Okay, anyway, I'll find it later. But I, So I got the actual, like, one of the original um, uh, stories that I watched way back in the day on YouTube, way back in the day. And they were having the, the interviews with children and all the rest of this, right? But that's been taken down. It's literally been removed. So I found the video, uh, not straight through YouTube. I found it through an article that wrote, wrote about it a long time ago and linked to that particular YouTube video. But it's gone now. So it's been taken down. So I don't know. It, like, it kind of makes me think that, uh, you know, they had that, that, that uh, documentary that was done on this. Maybe they paid them for that archive footage and then took it down as a result. I mean, all that stuff is possible. So, so I'm not go- going to, uh, you know, be too crazy aggro about that. But, uh, but you see what I mean, though? It's, uh, as stuff kind of maybe gets purchased out of the public domain, uh, it, it does disappear, doesn't it? I think that's part of what's going on here. So anyway, let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay Winch, what's up, says DuckDuckGo is a good way to search for old stuff. And you are correct. That's what I mostly use, to be honest, because um, Google started playing games. But uh, now DuckDuckGo, I think, has been comp- compromised in some capacity. How much, I don't know. But um, it seems like uh, their algorithms have changed as well. So anyway, anyway, let's get to this. Let's get to this. Now, this is from, uh, this is from uh, a fantastic website called Paranormal Zone X. And I'm going to link this and read just a little bit of, from this, uh, this thing to get us started tonight. But uh, yeah, so, so the, the long story short of this is uh, there were some kids on a, on a playground that saw, some, saw flying saucers of sorts, some kind of alien craft that landed, and uh, aliens got out and kind of communicated with them, right? So if you guys haven't heard of this actual story, um, that's what this is. This is the old uh, the aerial school encounter, UFOs over Zimbabwe. Robert's got a good point now on Facebook there, too. Wayback Machine probably archived most of those old websites, which is good. But again, like I said, if you don't know the original URL, it's difficult to go, go back and find them, right? So, so anyway, uh, anyway, uh, here we go. So let's, go, let's read some of this. So this is how this began, right? In, in total, this was an encounter in Arua. R-U-W-A is the name of the town. And it's not really a town. It's more like a... Um, <laughs> uh, less than a town, let's say. Less than a town. It, not very many people there. But okay, in total, there were 62 children outside of the school at the time, and most of the teachers were inside the school at a meeting. All right, so oddly enough, this thing starts, and we have teachers inside doing as they do, right? Doing their meetings and, you know, checking their boxes and, you know, uh, all the uh, normal administrative stuff you have to do for school. But then, uh, th- this, it, it, that's when it gets weird, right? So there's not a lot of teachers out on the playground. The kids are mostly unsupervised or, you know, very sparsely supervised. And then they start to see strange things in the sky. So uh, it was reported that only one adult was supervising the recess that morning, a mother of one of the children. She operated a snack bar for the students, selling soft drinks, candies, and other favorites. Uh, so there had been reports of UFOs in the skies over Zimbabwe only two days before, but it is unlikely that any of the students were aware of these reports. 
Ariel was a private elementary school hosting students of all backgrounds. And I did, uh, I did find out digging into this a little bit that it was also a more of a wealthy school. So a, a lot of the students there, the tuition was high. This wasn't a situation where it was kind of like, you know, a public access thing. It, these, most of these, these children there were privileged. Okay. All right. Which again, it, it, it may or may not actually play into this story tonight. Um, but okay. So then we, we continue. Uh, several of the children stated that they had seen three unknown flying objects in the skies over the school prior to the landing. Students saw the UFOs disappear and then reappear in a different place in the sky. Finally, at least one of the UFOs either landed or hovered just above the ground. So this thing uh, is flying around. There's a couple, three of them. that n- Nobody knows exactly how many. Some kids have said three. Some have said two. But then one of them, at least, comes to a standstill and lands or hovers and is kind of just chilling out there. Now, I guess, I guess uh, in this particular area, like I said, it's not like a city. And so this school, uh, just, just outside of the school grounds, was more like a, you know, the bush, as they called it. Um, actually, you know, like a wilderness, African wilderness. And so it was, you know, you're not supposed to be out there, clearly dangerous things, and right? It's, it's, you're supposed to stay on the school grounds. So out where this thing landed, the kids weren't supposed to be out that far. But anyway, this continues. So one of them landed or hovered. The UFO was only about 100 meters from the students at play. The object was in a heavily wooded area, which was off limits to the students for safety concerns, like I said there. So soon, what the students described as a small man could be seen on top of the UFO, standing on top of the UFO, okay? Now, now again, if you're, you're, you're imagine it, right? You're, uh, these kids are mostly between uh, the ages of 6 and 12 years old, and they're out there on, you know, on recess at the playground, and uh, there's only one actual um, uh, uh, dog barking drives me nuts, sorry. Uh, there's, o- there's only one actual teacher on duty that's watching out at recess, right, selling snacks. All of them are inside uh, doing at some meeting. So, all right, so then they, they see this, what appears to be a small man standing on top of the saucer, the UFO, whatever it was, watching them, all right? And then so... Uh, so apparently now, now the numbers of this, this entire incident. So at the school, there's probably somewhere in the range of um, 300 students, something like that. And uh, so at, at this point, and the way the story goes, 62 of those said they saw this incident. Okay. So I don't know what that means. You know how playgrounds are. So, you know, some people are like way out there at the monkey bars and some people over here running and racing and, you know, so who knows? I don't know exactly what that looks like or why. Only, you know, maybe about 25% or 30% of the students uh, actually fessed up to seeing this, this UFO. But uh, that's, that's how the story starts, right? And so they say they see this little man sitting on top of a UFO or standing on top of a UFO, rather, watching them. And so uh, they start to get a little bit uh, antsy, a little bit um, concerned confused right there's a whole bunch of like uh, imagine you're six to 12 years old you're on the playground and what appears to be a ufo lands 100 meters out and there's a strange little man standing on top watching you how would that make you feel so that's what we're talking about tonight. It's the aerial school encounter. If you've never heard of this, uh, and it gets it gets it, it uh, the, the the plot thickens. This uh, the, it becomes more than just a, a sighting of a, a flying saucer and possibly an extraterrestrial watching these children. It uh, it becomes something else. It turns into basically an international worldwide type incident, which we're going to get to as we talk about that tonight. So as we get into that, uh, we're, uh, that's what we're doing. And we're taking your phone calls. Did I mention that? If you've heard of this, I want to hear what you think. Do you think this is a compelling case? Do you think this is one of those situations where it's uh, maybe a case of what would you call it? Mass hallucinations? I don't know. Like I said, I haven't, I wasn't there. I'm just kind of a secondhand, thirdhand accounts on this stuff, reading things on the internet. I don't know what to think. Is it compelling or is this one of those manufactured stories for whatever reason? We're going to look at that tonight. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, if you know about this story, if you've heard of it, we're discussing it. 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. More stories about... UFOs and aliens after the break. Don't go anywhere. All right. 
right, welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are live. We're streaming live on Facebook, DLive, and YouTube. And Periscope, apparently Periscope's back. Maybe they renamed it. Anyway, if you're out there watching on Twitter, what's up? Periscope is back. And we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And we're taking your phone calls tonight. As we discuss this weird... UFO encounter in Zimbabwe in 1994. What is this all about? Have you heard of this? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's a manufactured story? Or do you think it's something else entirely? That's what this show's about. Drinking the maybe juice and kind of going back into some of the mythologies and uh, stories that have been told regarding the UFO phenomenon and wondering what the heck is really going on in this world. Is this, is this, uh, anyway, phone number to call. If you've heard of this, that's the question for tonight. Have you heard of this encounter first off, this, uh, this UFO encounter with aliens at the aerial school in Zimbabwe in 1994, or is this uh, something that's new to you? And if it's new, that's a good thing because, uh, these are the types of stories that kind of need more discussion. I think, um, they've, they've had, uh, document documentaries done about them. And like I said, tons of websites back in the day and all the rest of this stuff. But, um, wh- what do you think? Is it, uh, is, is this mass hallucinations, which we'll get to tonight too. We're going to, that's on deck. We're going to talk about that phenomenon known as mass hallucinations, right? I mean, is that even real? Does that sound real? Has anybody out there, this is the other question for tonight, right? First, this Zimbabwe uh, aerial school thing, 1994, aliens spotted by school children, number one. Number two, regarding mass hallucinations, has anybody ever had something like that happen in their life where it was an actual mass hallucination that you can go back and you can tell an exact story about where you got caught up in something and somebody told you a story and you thought you believed it and you didn't? Or, right, they convinced you that you saw something that you didn't. Weird, right? That seems strange to me that uh, just because you're, you know, uh, your, your peer group would say, no, no, we saw it, we saw it, that you would say, yeah, I saw it too. I don't know. Children, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Troubledminds.org. Click the Discord link and uh, we'll put you on the show. Simple as that. All right. So as we continue here, we're, that's what we're talking about. This mass hallucination stuff is how they explain this away. The official story now, uh, very much like Project Blue Book and the old UFO days, right? The weather inversions, uh, Venus in the night sky, uh, swamp gas, <laughs> weather balloons. And now, of course, it's morphed into the UAP report and we have aerial clutter, right? Aerial clutter. Uh, ma- mass hysteria. Is that what I said? Was I saying something else? Mass hysteria. My bad if I didn't say that appropriately. Okay. So, so I think that's the thing, right? That's what we're talking about tonight. Oh yeah. Mass hysteria. My bad. I was saying mass hallucinations. Yes. Mass hysteria. So, so is that, is that something that uh, you guys have ever actually encountered? So anyway, we've got a, a phone call here. Let's take this and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep on trucking, but we are taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And let's go to whoever this is. Uh, but if you actually have a, a comment on any of this stuff, 702-957-1037, troublemise.org, and let's continue talking about this. Uh, thanks, Gus. Thanks, but no thanks. All right, so um, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's continue reading some of this. Now, the thing is this, right? This, this, uh, they, so we, we left off this, this UFO lands, and these kids supposedly see uh, a, a, a UFO, all right? They, say the, they see lights in the sky, they're zipping around, and then something lands. And they see this, uh, this weirdo, uh, whatever, like a, like a small man is how they describe it, sitting on top of the UFO and watching them on the schoolyard from about 100 meters away, right? So here we go. So the UFO was only about 100 meters from the students at play. The object was in that heavily wooded area. Soon, what the students described as a small man could be seen on top of the UFO, all right? This was witnessed by 62 school children who had little or no exposure to TV or popular press accounts of UFOs. Cynthia Hind, a resident of Zimbabwe, MUFON's coordinator for Africa, there's that name again, MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, uh, and author of the book UFOs Over Africa, interviewed them the day after the encounter and had them draw pictures of what they had seen. Now, some of the, some of the real strange stuff about this is, 
you know, when you ask, you know, uh, school, school children to draw you pictures, uh, some of the photographs that were drawn about this seem to, to match up, right? Like uh, man, many of them drew what appeared to be like a saucer shaped sort of uh, craft, you know, that kind of came down and landed. And some of them had uh, uh, actual like landing craft feet on there. And uh, it, it just it just seems odd. It seems odd that, uh, you know, again, uh, mass hysteria and the rest of this, it did, did, does it go on the rumor mill? Uh, okay, so I guess let's say this, right? Let's describe it this way. If this actually happened, or let's say it didn't happen at all, let's say none of this was true whatsoever, or maybe, you know, maybe it started with a meteorite in the sky or something, right? And then it, it morphed into this larger story. Would it seem plausible that these children would be able to draw very similar pictures of not just the the uh, the little man they, they describe, but also the the saucer kind of in the same sort of shape, right? I mean, of course, you know these are these are kids and they're not artists or any of that. So it is. I was uh, the thing that's still up, and you can see is is, is if you if you just search uh, aerial aerial UFO A R I E L, just search that and hit images, and you'll see some of the actual photographs or not photographs like uh, drawings that these kids actually did. All right. And so uh, I don't know. Some of them match up. Some of them are, you know, uh, of course, they're not all spot on. And I would imagine they threw away the ones that weren't. OK, so there's that. Right. The, the um, you know, bias of the data set. But, uh, you know, the ones that, that have made it to the Internet that have survived are actually um, they seem to be uh, at least compelling enough to, to say that, OK, look, these these kids saw something similar anyway. Right. So anyway, uh, so so the story goes on. It continues here. There's a whole bunch of articles about this. So I'm going to link the one that I'm reading from here. But there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of really fantastic articles that have been done after the fact about this. And um, and yeah, uh, let's see, let's see who else was that? Uh, actually, I, I got to. I'll, I'll, I'll get that guy in a sec. Anyway, all right. So so we'll continue here. Um, so this is a this is a. The following is a report of the incident from a UFO investigator named Cynthia Hind. Now, this is a little more specific on, this was on Friday, September 16th, approximately 10, 15 a.m., 62 of these children at Ariel School, a private elementary school in Rua, about 20 kilometers from Harare, were in their playing field for the mid-morning break. Suddenly, they saw three silver balls in the sky over the school. These disappeared with a flash of light and then reappeared elsewhere, all right? This happened three times, and then they started to move down towards the school with one of them landing or hovering over a section of rough ground made up of trees, thorn bushes, and some brown-gray cut grass with bamboo shoots sticking up on the ground. Uh, the children are not allowed in that area, okay, so they didn't go out there, uh, but one can soon uh, see, uh, uh, so, sorry, one, uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, reading that wrong, so it happened about three times. Uh, they came and landed, then they took off, they came and landed. Barry said the main one was about the size of his thumb, na- his thumbnail held at arm's length, all right, so he's, he's describing maybe the scale based on, uh, you know, a- as a child would describe. And the reports were similar, although some children were more observant than others, as you would expect, right? Because people are just more or less observant, uh, and that's that's just the way it is. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Let's see. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Is that is that is that the uh, actual YouTube video, Richard? That's that you found it. You found the uh, the interviews with the kids. Okay. So anyway, then now this is where it starts to get weird. Okay. So you, people see UFOs all the time, so that's not too terribly weird. All right. But then they see the small man. So then a small man approximately one meter in height appeared on top of the object he walked a little way across the rough ground became aware of the children and then this little man disappeared and presumably we ha- we have to you know if this is a ufo that landed and a little man got out and was walking around what's 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 the logical thing to assume here right does it does it seem if you say all right this is probably not human right if you say that, is that the actual logical thing to say, or is it not at this point? Like, right? Again, you, you, like you got to think about these things in these steps, and then also the eyewitnesses from the children and all the rest of this. But anyway, okay. He, this little man that disappeared, he or someone very like him then reappeared at the back of the object, at the back of this UFO. And if, you see, if you're watching the stream, the live stream, you can see some of the photographs here. I'll actually put it up on, on the stream here. Some of the, so the photographs that they drew regarding the, the, the saucer, right? 
So, you know, kind of maybe, uh, maybe this is, this is the maybe juice, right? Where you're looking at some of these, these pictures they drew and, you know, some, some's more like, um, like more, a long and thin type of saucer. One's more like a dome. Another one has like, um, you know, like jagged things underneath it. Like, who knows? Uh, who, like, this is one of those, well, is this, what did they see? So anyway, so the object took off very rapidly and it disappeared. The little man... This is where it gets even more weird. The little man was dressed in a tight-fitting black suit, which was shiny, according to one observant 11-year-old girl. He had a long, scrawny neck and huge eyes like rugby balls. He had a pale face with long black hair coming below his shoulders. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this actual investigator named, uh, what is this, Cynthia Hind, uh, had suggested uh, to Mr. Mackey prior to visiting the school and before the children had been interviewed that he let the children draw what they had seen. And he has now about 30 to 40 drawings, some of which are very explicit and clear, some are rather vague. Uh, so the children's ages, again, are between five, five and six years old to 12 years old. And uh, here's some of the ones, right? So if they got all of these drawings, this is what I'm saying. This is, this is where the thing kind of makes me scratch my head just a little bit. Because you have these weird, uh, actual weirdness with these photographs. And some of them, you know, they look kind of similar, right? With the little man and the black suit and the big eyes. I don't know, but not too similar either. Um, so, you know, it's kind of it, compelling or not. I think that's the question here, right? But then we have the interviews with the children, of course. So, so anyway, so let's see. The object took off very rapidly and disappeared. Uh, the, let's see. He was in a shiny, shiny black suit. Let's see. Okay. So they got 30 to 40 drawings and there's, you know, uh, two, four, six, there's eight drawings here, right? So only, only 20, less than 25% of the drawings are here. So, so I don't know. Uh, what does this mean? So most of the descriptions are similar, but some of the craft are very obviously flying saucers. And I wonder how many of these children have had access to the media. Others are crude, but more or less in this saucer shape, right? Kind of saucer-ish, I guess, if you look at the photographs. Okay, so anyway, uh, now, now again, right? So just kind of back up and think of this in terms of just the larger, the larger thing here, the larger conversation. All right aliens right a, 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 flying saucers this thing lands right uh, right near a schoolyard and these things whatever it is these small these little men they describe them wearing the shiny black suit long spindly arms right uh, about three three feet four feet tall some said it was shorter some some uh, the students said it was taller i don't know like this this is this is the situation where again is it is it mass hysteria is this one of those situations where somebody made up a story and they spread it through through the schoolyard and then everybody was telling the same story by the end of the day right that sort of thing i don't know i don't know uh, because there's more there's there's a lot more to this right a lot of these kids were distraught some of them ran inside going for teachers crying um so so i don't know like this is one of those ones where uh you know it, and, and the teachers basically so so as this as this develops right uh, it gets it gets more weird because the some of the students say that they had contact with these extraterrestrials of sorts, right? That these small men with the, the big, the big rugby shaped eyes, rug, rugby balls, right? Uh, and, and not only, right, it was not a, it was a nonverbal type communication. And so, some of them said similar things. And the similar things, oddly enough, that they, that they were actually communicated to from these aliens, these, uh, these extraterrestrials, supposed extraterrestrials, let's say, is that uh, there's a lot of this that kind of goes around in UFO tropes, right? Meaning that uh, the aliens were trying to communicate to them that human beings needed to be careful with their technology, all right? Human beings needed to uh, take care of their planet, right? Human beings needed to uh, do, you know, just, just be, be better, right? As like a, as one of those type of things, as these, these messages that the children were getting basically beamed to them or telepathically through their, through their brains, right? Uh, as, I don't know, like, and, and that's what's going on. So, so then not only we have a, a flying saucer landing at a schoolyard, right? We have 60 some witnesses. And then we have the story that goes that, that they, 
years later, they're actually talking about this now as as adults, right? Uh, they tracked down many of them recently and re-interviewed them for this uh, this new documentary that came through, which I can't play it because, of course, it's you got to buy it and you know copyrights and all that. But uh, they did, so they actually tracked down a bunch of these students years and years later, and they described this as exactly how they described it back then. So I don't know, right? Like, is it? Uh, is it one of those mass hysteria situations or is it something that's something different, something, something else? Could this be true? I guess, I guess that's the, the description tonight. And it, have you heard of this? Like I said, we're taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Go to troubledminds.org, click the discord link and get in here and we'll, uh, We'll uh, we'll put this uh, we'll put you on the show and uh, you can tell me what you think about this stuff, and and I think that's the thing, right? I have a hard time with um, well, with a lot of this only because um, not just this, like the entire you know UFO accounts and the way it's it gets censored, right? So when it gets censored, so is it like just a bunch of hogwash? Is it really mass hysteria or is it? Like legitimate, is did something happen? Or I guess you know, let's uh, let's say, is it possible that this is a hoax of sorts? Because you could you could right you could fool people if you planned a, a decent hoax and had some help. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that, uh, uh, Richard. Uh, interview vid. Uh, so you found that interview video. Thank you. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. So so in, in any case, okay. So that's what we're talking about tonight. Have you heard of this? What do you think? Do you think that do you believe the kids that they actually had this encounter and they saw this? Or do you think it's something else entirely, some sort of uh, this mass hysteria or something else? Uh, like, is, is it possible it could be an elaborate hoax? I don't know. That's a, that's one of the things that I, I wonder about regarding this. And of course, right, so the, the, then the inv- in investigation gets launched. All right, because what what happens, what ends up happening with this is they end up, these, so some of these kids are distraught. Some of these kids say they're actually communicating uh, telepathically. Uh, and they didn't use those words. They described it as maybe images in their head uh, as they coming from the eyes of these entities, these little men or whatever they were. And uh, and it was this take care of the earth. It was right. It was these messages being sent. Uh, be careful with your technology. Uh, no, I think I think a, a few of them, even the, the kids even said the same word technologied. Like you should not be so technologied is what they the, the was beamed into their head, which clearly is not a way to say that word. But again, right? Do kids know that? I don't know. I don't know. So that's what we're talking about again. And so do you think this is real? As we look at this, this is, you know, it's definitely kind of one of those more compelling cases, I think, in terms of the scope of what happened and the amount of uh, people that were involved, like lots, lots of children that have stuck to their story to this day. But is it, uh, do you think there's, is it possible that this is just that mass hysteria? The, the, the mass hallucination, whatever the, the heck this is. I think that's the question tonight. So uh, you want to be part of the show? You know what to do? 702-957-1037, and we'll read just a little bit more of this. So, okay, so as the investigation ensues, uh, also the, the kids go back inside. Some of them are distraught. They're crying. They don't know what to do. Some are still out there communicating with these extraterrestrials, uh, supposedly, right? And then um, everybody starts freaking out. Uh, there's some teachers that have uh, come out after the fact and said that uh, they wish they had spoken up sooner because they did see something and they didn't want to uh, uh, seem crazy, right? That whole stigma thing. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. It's it, it, Again, this is not me trying to tell you this is real or this is not real. This is kind of going through this story and trying to decide what you think this is. And if it is, if it's legitimate that uh, some, uh, a, an alien craft landed and these aliens got out to try and communicate with school children, it seems strange, right? It seems uh, probably beyond strange. Uh, so, so, I don't know. I don't know. That's what we're doing tonight. And uh, let's read a little bit more. So, they go in. Uh, the, uh, there's a big calamity. And then, of course, the teachers have kind of a, a situation on their hands, right? So the, the investigation is they go out and everybody starts looking around and these craft are gone. They've disappeared. All right. They've, they, they're, they're gone. And so uh, now, now, now all the kids are talking about it and the, the teachers have to sh- you know, quiet them down, quiet, quiet. We're going to continue with the day and the lessons and the rest of this, right? So, so it's kind of like, you know, like a crisis control situation at the school for just, just, you know, maybe an hour or so. And then they get everything back to normal and there's kids still freaking out about this. School day ends, kids go home. Well, this blows up the next day because a lot of these children went home that night, uh, afternoon, let's say, and they told their parents about what happened. 
and what they saw and they were you know some of them were still kind of shell-shocked at what they saw and kind of the implications of this and they didn't understand right and so uh, then the parents start calling the school saying like what the hell's going on right like my kids telling me that they saw a ufo today or yesterday at school right like so the phone calls start coming in and now it's becoming not just a you know an incident that uh, cr- full-on crisis control from the school itself now the parents are wondering what the hell's going on at your school here like what like what what in the world right so word gets out now and now we have these uh, investigators again from the bbc uh from mufon and africa there and people are coming the next day now they, they catch wind of this because it starts making the news and then the investigations begin and they start interviewing children and having them draw the, the pictures and so so some of this stuff was the very next day and they, they started uh, asking questions and getting these these pictures from the kids so I think that's the thing right so so what what would you expect would you expect that it, it took them I don't know like how, how fast is a if assuming this was fake how fast does a mass hysteria or like a you know a fake sighting uh, kind of get drummed up do you think this can be like an instantaneous sort of thing or, or do you think it uh, takes a little bit longer? Uh, but anyway, th- this is one of those situations where, you know, it's one thing when you get one person see a UFO, right? Or one person say that I, you know, had an abduction experience. But when you have 60 people, right, say I saw an alien craft land and what appeared to be an alien get out, it, it changes things, doesn't it? It changes things quite a bit. So, so I don't know. I think that's, uh, that's part of the, uh, what's, what's a little bit strange about this. And then uh, the fact that nobody's really come out from the school and said, no, this was a hoax, right? Nobody, like none of the kids have come out and actually said, nah, nah, this didn't happen, right? It's kind of like that Travis Walton thing. It's like finally the one guy, if you guys have been following that story, uh, Travis Walton got abducted in uh, you know, 1973 or five or six or something like that out there in Arizona. And he, uh, his buddy now finally, years and years and years later, uh, it says that no, it, it didn't happen because they're cutting him out of the money for the next movie or something, right? So, so I don't know, right? Like this is the type of stuff that do you hold a secret that long for? I mean, it couldn't have made him rich, right? Anyway, that's what we're talking about tonight. This aerial school encounter, and not just that, mass hysteria, and uh, is it possible that uh, this was completely fake and it never actually happened? I don't know. Again, like I said, I, this is not the answer show. This is a question show, and I wonder, just like you do, maybe some of you guys believe this or maybe you don't believe this. I don't know what to think about this one because it, it is compelling in the number of witnesses and how they really haven't budged off the story, but then doesn't it seem so fantastic? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, as we discuss this and think about this, there's more. We've got more of this type of stuff of this, not just uh, mass hysteria, actual mass sightings of ufos this isn't the only one there seems to be plenty more but uh, we'll keep talking about this and the rest of this as we go tonight this is troubled minds i'm michael strange and we're looking to hear from you have you heard of this incident in 1994 and what do you think about it legit or nah 702-957-1037 don't go anywhere more about this after the break you're not allowed to talk about you know what those things are aliens conspiracy the paranormal the government academia the 24-hour news cycle propaganda and the general feeling that we live in the upside down 
We are live tonight, as always, Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. If you want to be part of the show tonight, we are streaming on Facebook, YouTube, DLive, and Periscope. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM, reading the chat in all those places, taking your phone calls tonight. You can reach us at 702-957-1037. That's 702 702- Nine five seven one zero three seven, and uh, we're we're discussing this strange incident in Zimbabwe, nineteen ninety four, with it's it's called the aerial school encounter, and so apparently, long story short, to catch us up as uh, we get into the investigation and some of this, we have a UFO that seems to land maybe 100 meters outside of a schoolyard. This is, again, at, at a place named um, uh, Aerial School in Zimbabwe in 1994. And we have about 60 eyewitnesses on the playground that actually have still stuck to their story to this day. And they, they discussed this like, like it was a matter of fact, like this actually happened. And the way it went down is the aliens landed, so they say, and they got out of their ship, and uh, they communicated with them telepathically. And kind of, you know, d- discussing through through this mind magic or whatever you want to call it, that uh, humans should be careful of their technology. All right. And we had some good questions in the chat as we were uh, talking about this and thinking about this uh, during the break there. And uh, somebody mentioned, like, why would they go to if they were worried about human technology? Why would they go to one of like the most you know non technology oriented places in the world, which is Zimbabwe, of course. Right. And that's a that's a hell of a question. Who knows? Maybe it's uh, maybe because of the population density. I mean, I could think of a number of reasons. But then why would they contact school children as well? I think we have some, some weirdness, some weirdness going on. But we also have a phone call. So if you want to be part of the show, we are taking your calls at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can go to troubledminds.org and click the Discord link and be on the show that way. But let's go to Matt in California. What's up, Matt? You're on Troubled Minds with Mike. How are you, my friend? Good. How's it going, Mike? I'm doing good. Doing I'm good glad, to be the, glad to be the first caller. Thank you. I'm glad you are as well. What, so, so what do you think <laughs> about right. this aerial school stuff, man? Is this uh, weird, right? Like there's a lot of weirdness here that, you know, if, if this is real, this changes everything. But if this isn't real, what does this say about people, right? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a great story. Um, <clears throat> so I've seen the doc- this documentary on this a few years back. Uh, I was, it was like a it was like on an episode on TV and I uh, watched it. Interesting. But what I, you know, and it was like, they were kids and then they came together as adults, like later on and read It's a documentary on that of them, like having like a reunion meeting again and their adults telling the story being documented. And like the most interesting thing I find about this story is that, it's great to me how, in all these stories, you know, they said the aliens communicated telepathically. And in all these stories, we've heard this story over and over, is that these certain aliens, they're trying to help humans. They're trying to warn us, maybe say, you know, we're, we need to wake up and stop using fossil fuels and stop using, you know, things that are destroying our planet to in order to survive so these aliens are trying to help us it's that same story over and over i don't remember that girl what was that one girl's name that she said the same kind of thing that the alien was communicating with her telepathically i don't know there's been so many uh i'm not exactly sure which, oh, okay. which one you're referencing there was, a, there was a show we did there was a show we did on a girl and uh same thing she was saying that we need to we all need to learn how to um change our language the universal oh. language to like tell Oh, to telecommunicate with each other. Yes, uh, Anjali. Words. Uh, Anjali is, a, is yes. who that was. Yes. So she's a she was the yes. retired uh, military person that claims to have had contact with extraterrestrials in a cave somewhere in Arizona. So and then she said that they te- they connect uh, connected with her telepathically and told her that humans needed to get their stuff together or there was going to be a real alien invasion. Right. That one. Yeah, exactly. It was, um, saying we need to, our language is, you know, it's so hard to explain things like in other cultures, other countries. So they're saying that humans need to learn telecommunication in order to, I guess, 
uh, you know, we're, we're like stuck in this rut, you know, we're stuck over and over and we're just using fossil fuels, destroying the planet. We need to, the aliens are trying to help us evolve, I guess you could say that into something better so that we're not just going to destroy our planet. This story has been told a lot. So, and I don't know if it's like certain aliens, but it's interesting that this is one of those stories too, where their aliens are trying to help us. And they actually like, they actually communicated with the humans that I think that was just a good story. Yeah. And, and so it is, so I call it a trope, right? It seems to be that we, we get this quite a lot from people that claim contact of sorts and n- not just l- like, let's say if you're, you're, you know, the typical alien abduction phenomena is not really this, it's something else. It's like, they don't remember contact in many cases. I mean, it's varied of course, but it seems like people that have what's known as a visitation, which would, which is what this would be they seem to have more of like this telepathic contact in terms of exactly what we're describing here. You know, uh, take care of the planet, the fossil fuels, you know, the nuclear power, things like this is uh, weird though. Right. I don't know. Like, is it, is it, is it rude to call it a trope? (laughs) You know, I mean, I mean, maybe that's, I mean, there's some truth there, right? There's definitely some, some human truth there that we, we know that without the aliens telling us, but, but I don't know, man, I don't know. It's, it seems like this is uh, something that gets repeated quite a lot. Uh, so, so, so what do you think of it then? Do, do you think, so you saw the, the documentary, some of the, the actual, um, uh, you know, these, these kids grown up and discussing this, and they stuck by their story mostly on, on the, the documentary you saw, right? Yeah. I think uh, they, they did try to put it off as a mass hallucination. Like, that's what they're trying to say it was at the end of it all. Yeah, that seems to be the official story mass, at this point. Yeah, mass hallucination. Ma- yeah, mass, mass hysteria. Mass, mass hysteria. Exactly, yeah, mass hysteria. That, that's what seems yeah. to be the, the, but, the official explanation. But, so do you think it's more yeah, than that? Yeah, it's one of those, I don't know. Uh, I, you know I want to believe it just because, like I said, it's a great story. You know, it's kind of creepy. It's got, you know, it, it could have happened. I don't know. And it, I, I want to believe it, you know, but then again, there's always, you know, you have to keep it in the back of your mind. It could be fake, but I just... I want to believe it just because, like I said, it's a great story and it's uh, telling us, you know, we need to evolve as human beings is what I get out of the end of it. Yeah. And, and I, I think, I think that's the interesting part, right? Is that, uh, I, I think you and I probably both agree. That's the case. <laughs> probably many people do is that uh, we do. I mean, <laughs> humans are bad, you know, like we do a ton of terrible things and, and that's, you know, there's no, like, you're not going to get an argument for me there. But, uh, <laughs> but, but like, do we need the aliens to tell us? I mean, do, do you think it would shock us into maybe doing the right thing? I don't know. It seems like not enough. You know what I'm saying? Well, that story goes, you know, all the way back to like ancient gods were even talking about that and the animal tablets of Toph and things. So that's, you know, a story that goes back saying that humans need, we just need a, a better technology in order to, I guess, like, instead of, like, destroying the Earth, we need to, like, live, be in harmony with the Earth. Because we're going, we're going in the wrong direction. We're going in the wrong way right now. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I, and I think that's, like, like we, we should. I think there's no doubt. But, but I, I, I don't know. Like, it just seems like, don't you think, I, well, I guess I don't know. Like, think about it this way. So let's say you were the alien and you're trying to put that message out. Who would you contact? I mean... <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like good one. the White House, right? Like, you know, they're lying shifters. You know, they're not going <laughs> to, you, you know, like like shifty shift like we were talking about on the news show today, right? Like, like they just, I don't even think they would take it seriously, you know? Like they'd be like, oh, right. you know, we're being hacked by <laughs> North Korea. Yeah. And they're telling us they're aliens. Would, you know what I mean? Probably, I would probably contact scientists first or maybe, um, yeah, scientists. <laughs> over the over the White House. Yeah, right? Or, I don't know, maybe like a golf course or <laughs> something. Oh, teachers, I, yeah. Yeah. Teachers, so, maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I don't know. So, so do you believe the kids in this story, I guess, is, is uh, the, the, the end of the thing here? Is it, how compelling is it? Is it compelling enough for you to make you believe them, or do you think, eh, maybe something's amiss here? Um, well, I, I think something definitely something happened um whether they all saw the same thing or maybe it was made up 
I don't know, but something definitely happened there because we have, you know, the stories. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I want to believe them just because why would kids lie about something like this? Yeah, especially and with how, how would they make, yeah, how would they make something like this up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, does it start with just a meteor in the sky, a meteorite, and then it freaks out and turns into this huge blown out story? It doesn't seem likely, does it? It kind of doesn't seem likely to me. So, uh, so I'm with you. I'm willing yeah. to, to, to at least drink some maybe juice here and, and say that, okay, these kids kind of had a similar story. They stuck with it all these years, and nobody's come out of the group and said, no, no, we, Jimmy made it up on the playground, you know? Like, that hasn't happened as far as I'm <laughs> aware. So that, that would tell a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just think something happened. Okay, but we don't know what. Don't know what. We weren't, we weren't, yeah, we weren't there, so I don't know. But oh. it's, like I said, it's a great story. Okay, so fair enough. Like, I appreciate the call. Thank you, Matt from California for a palate cleanser. First call tonight. <laughs> have a great night. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for listening. All right, bro. Have a great night. Thanks. Talk to you soon. There you go. Easy as that. If you want to be part of the show, we're talking about the aerial school encounter. And so uh, back in 1994 in Zimbabwe, apparently uh, it, it's been said uh, by actually 60 eyewitnesses, 60 eyewitness accounts of children between the ages of 6 and 12 that they saw multiple ufos one of them land and they had some sort of contact with extraterrestrials right uh what's up we got a good comment here in the uh, the french chat uh, actually this is uh, this is our discord Lacey says if i wanted to make a change i would start with kids so maybe maybe that's not the worst place to go right maybe that's not the worst place to to maybe hit contact who knows but then of course you know we don't take our kids seriously when they tell us something like this so maybe it's the worst place all right uh, we're still taking your phone calls we got one we're going to take in just a sec if you want to be part of the show 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 troubledminds.org you can be part of the show by joining the discord and uh, let's talk to jack what's up jack in wisconsin how are you my friend welcome to the show Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, you know, man, talking about aliens, doing what we do here. How are you? What do you think about this? Uh, all this crazy stuff? Dude. You know what I'm thinking? What's that? You know what? I, I did a little research. I know other people have probably done the same research, but it's kind of strange that the Dogon in the, uh, in the Afghan sector, they actually knew about, like, Sirius B before anybody else in the scientific world knew that like Sirius A had a, a binary star that was Sirius B. And I thought it was kind of strange that these people like knew about that ahead of time. What do you think about that, Mike? I actually, uh, I'm not sure what, what, what you're referencing, what source that is. I have, I hadn't heard that. So uh, I'm hearing this for the first time, but it is, it is interesting if that's the case that maybe really? there was some sort of contact. About yeah. Sirius B? Well, no, no. He had I, a binary star, no, like no. right next to Series A. No, no. I know what Series B is, but I'm saying that That's I didn't where know the, that the they... scissors came came come from. So I I just want to let you know that ahead of time, you didn't even know about that. That's where like all the lizard people come from. No, no, Dude, no. Dude, serious. No, no, no. You didn't even know about that. No, 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 no. Uh, oh man. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Whole, you, 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 it, this is the whole. Oh my God! I can't believe I'm I'm letting you in on this. Sh- no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. You're misunderstanding me. I I know about Sirius B, but I don't know how you're describing that. In Africa, they were the first ones to know about it. That's the part I don't know. Explain that. Yes. Yeah. Explain that. Dogon. O G O N. Dogon. Dogon tribe. Okay. They knew about stuff before anyone else knew about it. Okay. Sirius That's- B and knew about Sirius A because they're like. Half man, half uh, fish people that came down and told them about it, and told them that there's actually a binary star. I, I can't believe you don't know about this. No, it's well, cool. <laughs> hey, I'm glad I'm letting you know this. Yeah, good stuff, man. I'm uh, I'm one dude. <laughs> it's hard to know it all. <laughs> Uh, but okay, so so that's that's the first I've heard of it. So uh, in in the chat, Richard typed Dogon D O G O N, and it says Sumerians. Is that right? Are they Sumerian? Yeah. All right. No, no, no. It's African, African. Okay. The Dogon tribe of Africa. They actually had like, like I said, they had someone come down. He was half man, half like, you know, am- amphibian or whatever. He was half, you know, water, half water creature. 
and he told the people about the fact that Sirius A had a, a binary star that was Sirius B. And then later on, they found out like Sirius B was like a real star that actually was, you know, like um, it was uh, rotating with Sirius A, which is really cool because Sirius A is like the, the brightest star in the sky. So, gotcha. All right, yeah, this is news to me. I'll have to look into that one. Uh, so, yeah. so what? So then, what do you think about this yeah. re- regarding the aerial school? This encounter? Do you think there's something weird to this, or do you think this is uh, seems legitimate and that there was actual aliens here? I think it's legitimate because I think a lot of times people discredit these things and they think like, well, something didn't happen because this person is uh, this. You know, they're underage, or this person mentally might might not be able to comprehend it. But it's like you have so many people that are going to say that something like this happened that you got to kind of give it credit, you know, give it credence because it it may be something that's real. So that's how I look at it. Okay, I I do. It's weird that there's a lot of witnesses. So that's the first one that uh, is has me has me even considering this that this is possible, right? But uh, I don't know. Have you seen like a documentary about this or anything else? Uh, is there anything else you can add, chip into this that may be, uh, may be more compelling or less compelling? Are you drinking a lot of the maybe juice or just a little bit? Well, I just look at it like we've all been hanging out with you, Mike, for so long. We've all seen <laughs> all these different, uh, you know, um, different things that um, – these different documentaries and everything else. And it's like, it all adds up. It all adds up. So all I have to say is like, you know, I'm sick of people saying there needs to be a, a real formal disclosure because I don't think there does, there does need to be a formal disclosure. I think the people are the ones that are disclosing everything and everybody needs to kind of keep their ears and eyes open because, you know, those are the real disclosures. It's not from the government. It's from, people like us, you know, that see things and they hear things and they, you know, they record things. Those are the people we need to start paying attention to. You know what I'm saying? So I agree. I agree hundred percent. It's why we do this live. It's why we've always done it live is to get to actual firsthand accounts and what uh, people think directly without a filter from the press. So yeah, I, I'm with you. Like I said, uh, if you take it in context of a, a lot of different stories of, uh, you know, contacts and aliens and UFOs and all this stuff that's been happening for a very long time, it's, it's hard to completely shoot it down, isn't it? It's a, it seems like a, it's something you have to take seriously, especially with so many witnesses. That's where I'm at with it. Again, I wasn't there. I can't yeah. say this or that or the other thing, but uh, I, can't, I can't instantly shoot it down just because uh, so many people saw this and they're still sticking with that story. So, yeah, good stuff, man. Anything else while we it, got you on tonight? It's awesome, for, like, it's awesome for an episode. Like I said, like, you know, these are we're the questions, people. You know, you present the question and we kind of answer you know, we kind of call up and talk about it or whatever, but we don't really know. So we're only kind of just talk, kind of talking about it. So I just hope everybody's having a fun time, and I hope I want to spread love out there. I hope everybody's having a great time, and I love everybody out there. Just want to give everybody a great big hug. You too, Mike. Thanks, Jack. And yeah. Luna and everybody else. Appreciate it, so, brother. Appreciate it. Back at you. Yeah, Thank have you. A good night. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the call. Have a great night. There you go. There you go. Spreading the love. There's Jack from Wisconsin. And as simple as that, if you guys want to be part of the show, we're taking your phone calls tonight. And we're talking about this aerial school encounter. This is 1994 in Zimbabwe. And, it, you know, it starts very innocently. We get uh, some UFOs in the sky, and then suddenly it changes. Uh, 60 children on the playground, I believe it was 62 is the actual number, witnessed some sort of spacecraft landing and aliens actually getting out of this thing. All right. And then there was some sort of actual mental communication, telepathy, something like this, where they described to the children through this telepathic message that we need to be better with our technology. We need to be scared of our technology. We need to be better to the earth. And I don't think anybody, I mean, we talk about that as a theme on this show, right? Is that we need to be more responsible with our technology. We're creating AI that's autonomous and it's going to be able to kill people, right? It's already happening. They had one go rogue not too long ago, an actual combat drone go rogue and go after somebody. Like, this is the type of stuff that, uh, right? Like, like once, once things get out of hand, uh, technologically speaking, uh, we have major problems. 
And so with that in particular, uh, it doesn't seem to me uh, too much a stretch, the message anyway. The alien part and the rest of this, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. But what do you guys think? Uh, as, as we continue talking about this, let me just burn through just a little bit of this. So this is what happened, right? So the children had direct eye contact with this creature. There seems to have been some kind of communication with the children about the state of the world, what we are doing to the planet, the destruction we are causing, although not all the children got this message. Some of the children were traumatized. Others were excited. The young children were the most traumatized as they were at the front of the group. Quote, they all went screaming back to the teachers. The teachers didn't believe them at first, but then they went home and told their parents who came to the school and wanted to know what happened. And yeah, that's when this kind of blows up and do that full on investigation that we're talking about, which we'll get to in a little bit. So some have suggested there's a cover up of a particular psychiatrist who actually came to do an investigation at this school where there was this supposed alien landing, right? Actual UFO and an alien landing. And uh, that's what that's where we're going to head next. But as of right now, we're just kind of considering this. Like I said, uh, this is this is the show where we kind of, you know, take a quick swig of the maybe juice and then consider all the possibilities. And the possibility here is a pretty huge has has huge implications, let's say. Because of course, if aliens are here, it changes everything, does it not? And I think that's part of the uh, the entire overall process of this. And like Jack said, I kind of agree. Uh, we don't have to wait for the government for disclosure because, of course, it comes from individuals. And if you get enough individuals, like I say, pointing in the same direction, shouting the same thing, well, that's better than any government any day, isn't it? Yeah, so that's what's up tonight. What do you guys think about this aerial school encounter? Did these school children see aliens? in Zimbabwe in 1994, or do you think it's just a, as the official report suggests, mass hysteria? You tell me. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. More talk about aliens, UFOs, and this aerial school incident after the break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I am your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, DLive, and Periscope. And we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. We're taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show tonight, the number to call is 702-957-1037. You can also join the Discord at troubledminds.org. The official website, phone number's on top of it, on, right on top, you can't miss it. Discord link is right on top, you can't miss it. And we're talking about the Aerial School UFO Encounter of 1994. It's back in the news on the BBC, and I thought uh, we hadn't talked about this ever on this show, so maybe it's time. So as we do that, it's important to hear what you guys think. Like I said, uh, I can read some of this, and I can tell you I don't know, right? That's, that's really... Uh, the shtick here, right? I'm, I'm supposed to start the conversation and we're supposed to have it together. So if we want to we wanna do that, you guys got to call. So, because uh, I don't know. I don't know the answers here. Again, I always say this is the question show, not the answer show, because if it was the answer show, I'd just read you the answer and the show would be over and that would be that, right? Well, and I'm, number one is that also no fun. It's also dishonest. So there's that. But anyway, 702-957-1037. Let's go to, uh, it looks like Jennifer called in after all. Is this Jennifer? Jennifer in Missouri. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, Mike. How's my connections? Okay. You sound fantastic. I'm running low on my data. No, you sound great. Sound great. Go right ahead. Okay. So this case is different than a lot of the American UFO cases we've heard about, I think. In that in that area of Africa, well, entirety of South Africa, and then also in Uganda, Zambia, um, Malawi, just all over the place, it looks like, from 2000, well, all the way back, uh, let's look, 1980, 1980s to like 2011, you were having what they were calling mass hysteria, what they were calling mass hysteria at several primary schools throughout that whole region. And so in secondary schools as well, um, in that case, with the 1994 incident with the 62 kids, you know, they reported seeing this UFO, but it's in the same area 
they reported in 2008 um, another incident, and it was in, it was a bunch of children also having hysterical ep- what they called hysterical episodes where they would um, go into a trance-like state and they would collapse and they reported seeing visions of different types of creatures. I mean, it happened again with another 110. It happened all over the place for some reason over those two decades. And it's really odd. And I think that the fact that they're tying that uh, health reports are tying these incidences together as mass hysteria involving school children in Africa is incredibly suspicious. Now, I mean, of course, we could just say that we know in the United States that people see UFOs are not, not usually primary or secondary school children, but children do have a lot of reports of these, especially children I've heard about being involved in where they believe that they are MK ultra victims or have been subject to some kind of studies involving private alphabet um, government offices. We'll just put it that way, I suppose. But I think that there's a strange connection here. We don't, I mean, there's not enough information about it, but none of those children retracted or changed their stories. So they did experience something and whether or not the locals are calling it demonic attacks or whatever, which I mean, that's what they would say because that's the kind of culture they're coming from. But some of these schools were shut down. I mean, so it wasn't just this isolated incident with these 62 children in 1994. There is a huge um, series. There were <clears throat> at least 12 different incidences involving primary schools, secondary schools of these very rural um, villages. So I think it's, I don't know, it could be linked into some kind of, uh, who knows, but I think that the, there's a strange connection going on and I can't figure out what it is. And but the other day, <clears throat> real quick, I was listening to this lady and she claims that she was MK Ultra. I'll leave her name out. She had a channel on YouTube actually. But she also claims that she began seeing aliens as a child and that she was part of MK Ultra. And so there's something going on with, with it. And I, I don't know necessarily what it is. And what I have found about it is, like I say, very dark <clears throat> and not really something I you know, feel comfortable for us to get into. But either way, I mean, this mass, this incidence of hysteria, as they put it, involving the UFOs, it wasn't limited to just UFOs. They were seeing all kinds of strange things. And the other last thing with these kids was they didn't really, I mean, these are, this is a rural location. They don't have access to the same kind of pop culture UFO um, information we have in the United States. So it's not like these kids were well-versed in, uh, you know, what people expect to hear about UFOs. As far as the message of goodwill, and I think the previous caller, or maybe it was the one before, mentioned that going to the children is a good idea. You know, if you want to make a big change, that can go, that can swing both ways, you know, as far as what kind of, whether it's for a positive change or a negative change, but also too, just to change a whole society, you start with the children. But on a government level, there's no telling. I think that there is some kind of something involving the government of the world and something, of course, that they aren't talking about. And I think that UFOs are a great cover for a lot of these things that they may be doing. But I, I'm not to you. damper out, you know, real UFO encounters, but all the same. That's just what I was kind of thinking on it. Yeah, so so not only that, so I was actually onto that as well, and I've got this medical journal pulled up. It's on the stream right now. I shared it. And, uh, That's the exact this is, thing. This is probably the one <laughs> I found. Hiding, yeah. so, so this is the Malawi Medical Journal. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Malawi. Anyway, so so there's a whole bunch exactly like Jennifer's describing oh, no, no, here. That's not, the, that's not the thing I was looking at. I'm sorry. Okay, but that's, that's, I'll have to find that and look that up. Too. I, yeah, I, I dropped it in the chat. It's already in the chat. So, so if you go down, there's actually like tons and tons of different, uh, exactly like Jennifer's describing here, incidents that happened in the late 90s, early 2000s in Africa that were actually specifically described as mass hysteria. And so like, like you're saying, Jennifer, it's not just UFOs in some cases. It's, uh, it's like um, demons, like coming to eat the children. It's things like this. It's, it, it's all over the place. And so I wonder, I'm, I'm with you, and I, w- and I was going to get into this myself. If you didn't bring it up, we were going to head there eventually, probably for the third hour, like you say, because it's a little bit dark. But oh, cool. the yeah. situation is is possibly 
that we're working with a a uh, like a larger psyop, right? Of how like imagine right. if you tried this at like an American <laughs> school, right? At like an American school, like you couldn't get away with it, right? You just couldn't get away with it. But if you were trying to do some sort of like maybe MK Ultra test and see what the reaction, the international reaction might be in Central Africa, for instance, right? You could kind of just sweep it under the rug and say, well, this may not be, you know, these guys don't know anything. It's just Central Africa, right? It's like misreporting or, you know, all this other stuff. Who knows whatever they're going to say about it. But it's it does make they sense do, what you're describing. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, just that you when you were posting a few days ago on one of the videos you had done and they had seen the Virgin Mary, I think, you know, in clouds and you were talking about the possibility of plasma spoofing and some kind of, you know, anyway, they try it out in these very rural locations. And uh, I, I think that's, yeah, go on with it for sure. Yes. I mean, that's all I was thinking about it. But I wondered if there was something going on exactly like you're talking about. Yeah, and, so, uh, so I'll just listen on in and see where you go with it. Because I think that's incredibly strange edge to take with it. But I think it's 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 plausible. It's plausible, exactly. And that's, that's what we're here to consider, all, all things plausible. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate the call. Anything else while we got you on the phone? Yeah. No, that's it. Have a great night. Appreciate the call. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you soon. That's Jennifer yeah. from uh, Missouri. Great call as always. We're looking to hear from you guys tonight. We're We're talking about this aerial school encounter and now that it was brought up uh, we were going to get there eventually is that there's exactly this medical journal uh, that I did link and uh, Malawi Malawi M-A-L-A-W-A-I medical journal I've linked it in the chat and uh, here we go it's talking about mass hysteria and this is kind of where we were going to head with this tonight because I don't know what to think like Jennifer was saying there I had the same thought in that if we're trying to do some sort of experimental something, right? Uh, maybe a psyop or like we did talk about, like she, she stated that the voice of God, these plasma spoofs or faking UFOs, basically. Remember, remember, we talked about this last week. And the thing was this. I said that we have the ability to not only fool the naked eye, we have the ability to fool radar and infrared and all the rest of the sensors, right? Because they're using these plasma spoofing technologies, which, of course, we know some of it, but, of course, the things we don't know is always the most exo exotic technology that, like, DARPA might be using, okay? So, for example, now, when you look at this, right, so uh, they're saying that mass hysteria was pretty much rampant through the late 90s, early 2000s in Africa in particular. Check this out. South Africa, right? One of the countries in Africa with a number of episodes of mass hysteria among students being reported. In 1999, mass hysteria occurred at a high school in Umtata, Eastern Cape, South Africa. Ex excuse my pronunciation of these names. I'm probably saying all of them wrong. But uh, when, when it, the outbreak displays several features of mass hysteria with pseudo seizures, to many people in the town, including doctors, priests, parents, and students, this was an unknown phenomenon. It generated a lot of anxiety, aggravated by extensive media coverage. So is that what causes mass hysteria? Let's continue. There's more. And there's more. Like, this is literally, like, just South Africa. I'm going to highlight this in the, in the stream, and you guys can see. All that right there are instances in the late 90s and early 2000s of mass hysteria in South Africa. You see what's going on here? I am kind of liking what Jennifer was putting down here because I had the same thought when I was going through this and I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, what? Like, why suddenly all of a sudden in the same decade or so in Africa of all places, do we have all these instances of mass hysteria, as it's being called? And not only that, back to the aerial, aerial school, that's the most famous one. Because, of course, ufology, right? Ufologists uh, hook onto that. It's been, it's, you know, it's been, they make documentaries about it. But what about all the rest of these incidents? Just in South Africa, in that first bit, seizures, boogeymen, monsters coming out of the bushes, demons, right? Things like this. It's all over here. And so you're like, wait, what? Like, what, like, what the hell is going on in, in, in Africa in, in like the in late 90s, early 2000s, right? 90s. I don't know. And there's more, right? Another episode reported in two, 2002 at a primary school in uh, Kwa Dukuza, holy smoke, South Africa. 27 children had been well when they left their homes, collapsed at school, displaying tremors and shivers throughout their bodies. 
You see? Weirdness here. Many of the children also presented with ab- abdominal cramps and nausea. Almost all the children experienced a feeling of tightness in their chest as well as hyperventilation, which was then followed by fainting. This hysteria spread by line of sight. That is, other children seeing this also collapsed. I don't know. Do you think the, uh, the power of suggestion and mass hysteria is as this suggests? If you, if you saw a bunch of people pass out around you, would you just instantly drop as well? Weird, no? There's some weirdness here, but it's not just that. Tanzania, we've got Malawi, Malawi, we got Zimbabwe, which is this, this one here, which we'll read this. Zambia, we've got Uganda. Yeah. All in the same time frame, about 10, 15, 20 years-ish, depending if you take the earliest one on here and the latest one. Now, strange, right? It's, it's, it is strange. And uh, here's the one. So this is straight from this medical journal, and this is what, uh, what they're describing this aerial school incident as, right? Let's read it. Straight from the uh, thing here. I got this highlighted because it was a long, it's a long pa- Look, there's a long paper. This is all the instances of, ma- of mass hysteria that they, they put in Africa fr- from that 10 to 15, 20 years, right? So I had to highlight the one because I couldn't find it. Anyway, check this out. Straight from the medical journal here, it says, In 1994, 62 school children all reported seeing an alien craft land and extraterrestrial creatures emerge. Virtually every single one of the 62 children iterated the exact same story with same details, and none of them had gone against his or her story. Many dismissed the 1994 incident as mass hysteria affecting the children. But when the children were found to not have much prior knowledge to UFOs or popular UFO perceptions, many other people believed uh, that what the children witnessed could have been real. The children were asked to draw what they had encountered the day prior. And of course, which is what we've been talking about all night, so we don't need to continue with the rest of this. But you see, but there's a a ton here, right? Uh, Let's see. uh, Here we go. There's another one, Zambia. Zambia. Two people investigated what was reported, and I say two people because I can't pronounce these names, was reported at the local press as mysterious madness at uh, a Zambian school. The condition was actually an outbreak of epidemic hysteria, epidemic hysteria, they say, which was triggered off by a group of girls who were having educational and emotional problems prior to the, the epidemic. Isn't that, isn't that convenient, right? We just blame it on uh, hysterical females, right? That's, that's so easy. But So it continues. A change in the administrative policy of rigidly segregating the sexes apparently prepared an emotionally charged background for the rapid spread of the illness. Again, right? Like, what's going on here? Is there, is there some sort of maybe basis to this that uh, is not necessarily like a cultural thing as they describe cultural change when you're, you know, uh, uh, not segregating males and females anymore that may, may, sure, maybe, I mean, you know, if you've been, uh, been through that all your life and then you do that, something like that, like you may have a couple of days where people freak out, but if this is happening all over Africa for all kinds of different reasons, I kind of like what Jennifer was saying there, meaning that it's possible that some of these gain of function exercises, and I'm just speculating, I don't have no answers here. I'm not the answers guy could have been carried out in uh, less populated parts of the world where uh, some of the news might be just brushed under the rug internationally because people just shrug their shoulders and go, ah, whatever. It's just middle of nowhere Africa, you see? And this is what you would do, right? I mean, the government has done this all kinds of times. I can cite all kinds of stuff. But but point being is that if this is what's going on and uh, we're being fooled on in a lot of cases, uh, there's a problem here, right? There's a problem here, but I don't know. Like, I don't really know the answers here, but I'm asking you, what do you think about this? So in the end, right, we've got the the investigation begins uh, to go back to the aerial school for just a moment here. Uh, The investigation begins. We've got these photographs, which are these famous photographs of like the little, little man in the black shiny suit and the, the, the UFOs, right? The, this disc saucer type shaped. Uh, And then we have, you know, then we have the BBC shows up. And uh, the next day, they, they start investigating. A famous uh, psychiatrist from Harvard actually shows up and to question these kids, which is days later, by the way, because he can't be there the next day. So, right, is, is that a given in enough time to let the, the initial story cement in their brains? And then, right, they're not going to... Uh, anyway, they got a lot of attention out of it. That's for sure. Who knows? I think this is, this is the weirdest part about all this, is that, uh, as always, in my mind, everything's on the table here. And... Uh, then the, the we'll get to the, the Harvard guy in a little bit as we finish. We go into the third hour. 
But uh, I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Is it um, is it uh, definitely um, a, a alien type of situation? As as you would expect, right? Like the the basic u- story in ufology is that the aerial school is a compelling case. Sixty plus witnesses, like I was saying, they haven't budged from their story. But is it possible they were fooled? Right? There was some sort of um, government psyop of sorts, uh, just sort of in a gain of function situation to maybe see what would happen. Right? Uh, would would it really be mass hysteria as described? Or would it be something else entirely, like uh, like the kids communicating telepathically with um, with these aliens? I don't know. I have no idea. The, the the weirdness here is that if it wasn't for all that that data, and again, that's a medical journal there that was discussing all those things. It's got tons of links on the bottom if you want to follow up on all that stuff. And you're into this, I recommend you do. Uh, there's documented cases of this, and you know, this mass hysteria situation. And so is this, if this is the deal, then what's really going on over there? Is it cultural as they described? So let's read some of this just because it seems um, out there to me. Uh, So here we go. So what causes mass hysteria? Epidemics of hysteria rely on the power of suggestion. And this is from that uh, that, uh, medical journal again. Uh, But they are nourished by fear, sadness, and anxiety. Victims tend to be subjected to severe psychological strain over the preceding weeks or months. One or more then develop a psychosomatic symptom, and those made suggestible by pent-up anxiety quickly follow suit. Before long, dozens are vomiting, fainting, and screaming. The strain of exams is a common trigger. Reports suggest that many African school pupils are placed under such extreme pressure that mass hysteria has become virtually endemic. Weird, no? That's not the only place in the world where they have a really difficult school. Isn't like uh, South Korea, n- notably one of those places in the world where if you if you uh, you don't get good grades, like kids are like committing suicide, stuff like that, right? Which is horrible, horrific, all that stuff, but not mass hysteria, right? We're, we don't have like entire schoolyards fainting, telling stories about UFOs or demons or seizures, right? I mean, there's some there's some weirdness to these stories, and for them to try and explain them away is just saying, well, it's kind of like a cultural thing. It's a you know, it's a it's a pressure from school thing. It's you know, one person gets it, then they all get it. Explain to me this, by the way. Now that we we we're talking about anxiety and pressure, how about this? Don't you think these conditions are perfectly ripe right now? As many people have lost their businesses. Many people are stuck at home, have been working from home for months on end, where in some, in some places they're locking down again. Don't you think like anxiety and like the perfect storm of events for mass hysteria would be right now? Would be like in the last, well, I don't know, 18, 16, 18 months? It seems like it's a perfect storm for exactly how they're describing, right? Tons of pressure, the unknown, uh, media, uh, out of control, fear mongering, Right. Like people, maybe people dying from this thing that, you know, I'm not trying not to say the word, but you know what I'm talking about. Right. Like all of that. Like, don't you think we'd be ripe right now for for just a a, a rampant run of mass hysteria? We'd all be having seizures and vomiting. Based on the pressure, based on anxiety, based on what's been happening in the world. Don't you think? This is what I'm saying. So there's some people who suggest that mass hysteria itself is not even real that this is just a way to explain away things that they can't explain, right? Ancient astronaut theorists say no. You've never heard that before, have you? (laughs) I thought I'd throw that in there. But, right, it's one of those things. It's like, uh, okay, so is there or is there not an actual mass hysteria? Can anybody, this is, and this is why I wanted to talk about it in, in, in these terms tonight, is there anybody out there that's ever experienced mass hysteria? Have you ever had somebody pass out next to you and you passed out as well? As far as I can go as I've seen maybe somebody vomit, not to get too crude, and it makes somebody else vomit, right? That's all I've ever seen, but not like 50 people all at the same time. It's like somebody was caught off guard and they're like, oh God, and it turned their stomach and then they puke too, Right. That's the only thing I've ever seen that's suggestible from one person to another in terms of trauma or anxiety, right? 
in terms of something like that. I know, I know it's a minor trauma. I don't mean it like that, but you get what I'm talking about, right? You get what I'm talking about. Like it's, it, this is weird. This is weird. And so once you start looking into some of this stuff regarding the mass hysteria, as they try to describe away all these things in Africa, look, I'm scrolling through this. Look, all these things in Africa, late nineties to the, uh, or sorry, early nineties to the mid, uh, early 2010s, whatever, whatever this is. Anyway, like about 15, 20 years. There's all this stuff. I'm, I'm scrolling through this thing, this paper. You guys have the link. You can see it yourself. But it's weird, right? So, so I want to know, does anybody add, add the additional question, in which I actually said at the beginning, has anybody out there ever actually experienced any sort of mass hysteria? Ever, right? They said that it was happening with the Colorado drones. You remember that? Mass hysteria. Everybody reporting drones in the sky in Colorado a couple years back, uh, 18, 16 months ago, something like that year and a half, something, whatever, right? And so, again, the official story seems to be that, but you didn't get any people saying, oh, yeah, mass hysteria. I saw them because my brother saw them, right? Nobody ever said that. Nobody ever admitted that. I don't know. Anyways, we finish up. Uh, as we're, we're doing this, we're going to continue talking about this. This is Troubled Minds, and I'm Michael Strange, and uh, there are questions, right? And sometimes the answers aren't as simple as they seem, as you can see. It's easy to shrug your shoulders and say, yeah, aliens, right? But I don't know. I'm not so sure about this one, only because we have a ton of evidence about some other things that I'm not even sure it exists. You guys believe mass hysteria is a thing? And food for thought as we transition to the third hour here. Do you think it's even possible to pass on anxiety of such ridiculous degrees to cause all this other crazy stuff we're talking about? Anyway, we're finished. This is Trouble Minds. I'm Michael Stranger. If you're listening on the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Rook lighting the void. If you're listening to us on Periscope, Facebook, Live, YouTube, the podcast feed, stay tuned for a third hour of Trouble Minds. We're going to keep on talking about this. Keep on thinking about this. And at the end, be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. Now, what do you think about this aerial school? What do you think about the aliens and the kids that saw them? They never changed their stories, etc. so on. Like, what the world is happening here? Seems a little bit strange, no? Seems a little bit strange, especially when you start looking at some other things regarding, uh, yeah, yeah, some of this other stuff. Like the, the mass hysteria. You guys want to yawn? I'm not yawning. All right, so anyway... There you go. All right, so two-minute break. We're still talking about this. Don't go anywhere. More, a third hour of Trouble Minds coming up. If you guys are still interested, we're going to keep talking about this. And it, it opens up a whole other world when you start looking at mass hysteria reports all over Africa, huh? Yeah. Anyway, hang tight. Two minutes. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. More Trouble Minds in two minutes. All right, what's up? Welcome back. Sorry about that. I was chewing. <laughs> I didn't want to come back with a mouthful of, uh, yeah, uh, whatever I was chewing. Uh, and it's not pizza, unfortunately. But okay, so uh, yeah, we're, we're still talking about this. We're still doing this. And I, I wonder, right, like I said, uh, how many, now, now given some more additional evidence that you may not have known about uh, this mass hysteria, 
a kind of um, epidemic, let's say, uh, <laughs> endemic to, to Africa. Now, uh, actually, we have some folks out there that live in Africa. Uh, South Africa, as a matter of fact, uh, listen to the show. I'm talking to you out there. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Tam, for instance, says this. I've not ever seen mass hysteria in riots. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, while the world, let's see. Uh, let's see. We have been educating the masses as much as possible. Good conversation going on here in the chat. What's up, guys? Um, let's see. Uh, Robert says, I remember when my three sisters were five, four, and three years old. One night they came out of their bedroom crying. Uh, that there were snakes in their bed. Of course, there were no snakes in the bed, but they were terrified and insisted they saw them. So is that mass hysteria? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, chew, chewing is not good. Uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll avoid that next time. But at least you didn't, you didn't have to hear it. Now, okay, so the thing is this, right? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I, again, has anybody ever seen mass hysteria happen? And I think that's part of this, right? Like we talk about UFOs in the context of um, ball lightning and some of these other things, right? Where I did a whole show where I discussed ball lightning and even, you know, even back to the 60s, they had never been able to recreate ball lightning anywhere, but, it, you know, in a lab in very controlled circumstances. And it was like, snap your fingers and it was gone. So it was one of those things that was kind of like theory craft without a ton of like actual data from from the wild, you know. And so th- this is the type of stuff. Is, is it the exact same thing where uh, where it's like. Okay, so we don't have uh, information about this, so we're just going to say, well, mass hysteria, right? I don't know. I, I think I think that's the uh, yeah the ancient aliens guy with the hair. What's up, Ronald? Uh, the reading chat guy's just hanging out. Uh, third hour, we can let our hair down a little bit. Uh, I already dropped my pants, so uh, we're good. Uh, just uh, just to get some more air in this in this uh, you know in this. Uh, situation going on uh so there you go Uh, tam says no one cares about africa so no one takes it seriously when things happen and and i agree right and so that's that's tragic and unfortunate and that's part of the story here i think is that uh kind of like jennifer was describing and maybe hinting at she didn't want to say it directly but it seems like maybe uh if if you're going to test some of these things you don't uh you uh yeah exactly there you go there you go Exactly. Like, is there such a situation where we're kind of uh, testing things in, in particular parts of the world where uh, it gets less attention, so to say, so to speak, right? I mean, it's terrible. It's a terrible thought. But I think that's that's part of the issue here is that uh, you have to kind of take the, the, in, the whole thing in its entirety. And if we're talking about, I mean, so think about it, right? Could we, like, let's say maybe 10 of us got together and had like a nice budget. Do you think we could fake some sort of alien landing and convince kids that they saw some aliens, you know, do you think that's possible? Do you think we could do it with just like kind of, um, you know, basic technology and just kind of a, you know, a will to make it happen and, you know, like an okay budget, not a ton of money, but you know, enough to go spend some props and, you know, get to sew yourself some alien uniforms and things like this. Right. I, I I think it's possible. I, I think it's not just possible. It's probably, probably likely that you could pull it off, you know, like a small team of people, dedicated people with an okay budget. And so that's what I'm saying. Right. And, and I'm not saying that's the case in this instance, but I am saying that, uh, we have to be careful regarding a lot of this, uh, these types of conversations because you never know, like, uh, people do weird things, right? People do some weird, weird stuff. And, uh, you know, like we say, like, why, why the hell would you fake crop circles? Right. And yet there's people out there faking the hell out of crop circles, right? I mean, we got some that uh, listen to the show that know, know folks, folks that listen to the show that know other folks that have created crop circles. So it's like that, right? It's like, is it for the attention? Is it for the, the international acclaim? Is it for the lulls, for like the old school trolling? So imagine in, the, in 1994, that was like the dawn of the internet age, basically. Like uh, probably many people still didn't have a computer. The internet was dial up. It was right. And so it wasn't really like super viral hoaxville. It was still kind of like if you wanted to pull off a hoax, you kind of had to do it through the media. Right. So I don't know. I don't know I, I, that. I don't know. And uh, that's that's a good example there, Robert, of uh, maybe mass hysteria. Right. One saw a snake in the bed and then they all saw the snakes in the bed. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, what's up? Uh, Joe says, hell yes, and some mushrooms and, and lead-tainted water. No, no, I prefer pizza. <laughs> I prefer pizza. Uh, le- there you go. Uh, there you go, Fred. I see I see you there. I see you, buddy. <laughs> I saw the comment. But I don't know. Like, that's the question. So what do you guys think? Uh, so, so with some additional information, uh, now do you believe that it's possible that this was faked somehow, that uh, it was kind of done in, you know, I hate to use the term gain of function, 
But, right, if you were, you know, kind of a government entity trying to do something and test it on whatever was going on over there at, uh, you know, in Africa or, or, you know, again, some of these places where they don't get uh, enough enough respect in the world, right? It's like, you know, pe- people are being butchered over there and nobody seems to care, which is what I've talked about on this show before. We've talked about that. It's like it just depends, right? Because Because everything's kind of propped up by media coverage, and by that type of thing. So, so anyway, we'll get to some more of this. There's more to talk about here with the the actual psychiatrist from Harvard that went out there and interviewed these kids. But like I said, let's uh, let's uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about uh, this. There you go. I put it up, Fred. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. So uh, so let's talk about this. What do you think this is then? Uh, so now with some additional information here, do you think that this is still an alien landing? Or do you think maybe this uh, mass hysteria outbreak that, that they said was endemic, endemic to Africa, right? Uh, which clearly is still not a thing because this paper uh, doesn't add these. Let's see, what was the date here? Maybe it's because of when they published the paper. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this was actually um, published uh, September 23rd, 2011. So I wonder actually if this, this continues, if, it, if there's newer... Newer publications uh, chronicling weird stuff happening in Africa with uh, this mass hysteria bit. It it seems odd to me, right? It seems odd to me that, uh, like I said, I've never seen it. I've never seen it firsthand. You know, I've I've, uh, been been to the the schools and had, you know, seen my fair share of, you know, fights at the bike rack and things like this, right? But never like, you know, people like uh, one person has seizures and then everybody else as a result has seizures as well. You know, like that type of mass hysteria. I think it's different. I think it's weird. I think this is um, one of those situations where what the hell's really going on? I don't know. So, uh, but again, right? So there's some compelling stuff here as well regarding the alien stuff. We have to take these kids at their word, right? I mean, if it's not mass hysteria, they're saying they saw some aliens. The, some are saying that they actually were able to uh, communicate telepathically with the aliens. And uh, it was enough of a to do that the pissed off parents were like contacting and coming down to the school the next day saying, what the hell are you guys pulling here? My, my kids saying they saw aliens, right? So that's that's not nothing, right? It's not I I don't think we're talking about mass hysteria here, okay? But we have this other endemic to Africa, they say. I don't know. You guys tell me. Looking to hear from you. What do you think about this? Again, add some additional information to the story regarding some of this mass hysteria happening all over Africa as they say, and do you think it changes or do you think it doesn't? Do you think this is just a, an easy way of explaining things away like swamp gas and weather balloons and ball lightning, right? I think that's the, uh, the, the thing here. So looking to hear from you guys. Uh, like I said, we'll keep on trucking as long as you guys are interested tonight. Uh, we'll to, Up to the third hour. Looking to hear from you. 702-957-1037. Troubledminds.org. And what do you think? This is not the answer show. This is the question show. I wish I just had the answers. I just tell you. But I don't, so I won't. <laughs> We're going to keep on talking about this stuff. Uh, what's up, guys? Thanks for uh, thanks for being nice to each other in the chat. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Trippy Red says, um, any more, why should the government care as good as, as good as long as you pay? As long as you pay the taxes, right? Yeah, right? Uh, I don't know. What's up? Billy says, uh, yep, drone at night across a lake, easy peasy. Yeah, right. There's some, there's some ways to, to, you could fake some stuff. All right, Fred, have a good night. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Richard, there we go. Oh, there we go. That's a good example. Mass hysteria at music concerts before the music got crap. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Uh, hey, you says mass hysteria or chaos theory. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jennifer says, but it's not the teachers or the parents in the village as far as I read, just the kids. Can't imagine why, though, because that's targeted <laughs> dun, 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 dun. As, as the plot thickens, right? All right, let's go to uh, still taking your phone calls, 702-957-1037. Let's go to Joe in Florida. What's up, my friend? How are you tonight? Welcome to the show. I'm okay. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, sir. Go right ahead. So, uh, really interesting topic with mass hysteria. Um, of course, it's really happening. But a couple of questions, I think, right away. If it was mass hysteria and some of those kids got telepathic messages at their age, why weren't they asking for Lego sets? Why were they mature enough to talk about the planet being destroyed or being misused. That's one. Two, if it was a government experiment, 
what would explain Fatima, the mass vision of Fatima, the size of the UFO or the appearance of the Virgin Mary? Back then, the technology, unless there was something I don't know, the technology wouldn't be there. So I think something definitely happened, uh, not within the normal realm of what we see every day. Um, but maybe it was embellished. I don't know. Yeah. Have you so, have you seen any of these, uh, the, the actual documentaries with, with the interviews with the kids, the video and all that? Bits and pieces a while ago, because I think, you know, I think we had a show a little bit on, I think we touched on this probably over a year ago, a little bit here and there. Because um, I know the interview, I think one of the teachers or the people, but they're older, uh, especially if this happened in the 90s. But the other thing that I think about is, and, you know, I don't mean this in any offensive way to anybody in Africa or in South Africa, to her, Tammy specifically, but during World War II, in times of trouble, our pilots reported Foo Fighters. Um, we know that, I think in France, in Fatima, if that was around, I don't know if that was around 19, I'm not exactly sure, but it seems like sometimes these things happen where there might be unrest or anxiety, and maybe not in South Africa, but in parts of Africa, there were, you know, there are warlords and some civil war conflicts going around, especially in the 90s. So who knows if there's some kind of social anxiety, and it's, it is mass hysteria, not so much because the government's experimenting, but maybe one of those things could have at least been mass hysteria, but not all of them. It's like not all sightings are UFOs, but some of them you just can't explain away. Yeah. Again, though, like, I don't know. I, I have a hard time buying that, you know, because because again, right, if it's if it's literally endemic and it makes the news like this, as they say, I'm not I'm not so sure. Like like there's you know, like so for we had a good Richard had a good example. Right. So I think I think probably mass hysteria would be like with the Beatles. Right. Remember when people would like pass out. Yep. Because the Beatles, right, were playing, right, back back in the '60s, so like that in particular, yes, right. But it's kind of like you know you, you come in face to face with your hero, right, and it's like you know it's it's like an anxiety driven thing. But but I don't know, like the rest of this, like like other things, it's like I mean that would be coming like you know uh, you know meeting the president, you know what I mean, whether you like the president or not. It's like, you know, this is the president, the, the freaking, you know, leader of the free world, you know. I could see that as being like an anxiety sort of situation, even, even if you hated the guy, you know. But but yeah. beyond that, like yeah. with just your peers on a schoolyard, you know, it, it seems it's, well, it seems like a stretch to me, like a pretty big stretch. Were they, but were they, were they hypnotized, these kids? That's one thing I don't know. Yeah, no. So as far as I'm aware, uh, they were interviewed by this uh, Harvard psychiatrist, which we'll get to in a little bit here, but uh, they were not put under regression. No, not hypnotic regression. So they were just questioned. So, he, yeah. so here's the thing. I, I've, I've, had, I've had this story before. And as much as I'm trying to crack terrible jokes in the chat, um, when I was a kid, maybe 14 or 15, in Long Island, I saw something up in the sky. And I saw it with a friend of mine. But I honestly remember it as a dream to this day. I remember it as a dream. And anyway, my friend gets kidnapped. He was Lebanese. He was one of those stories in the 80s where the father kidnaps him. And that was actually one of my neighbors. So he, like, lived in Lebanon until he was, like, 18 or 19. And when he turned a certain, you know, when he turned 19, he told his dad, I'm out of here. It was, like, legal age. So now I'm living in Florida. And the kid comes back to visit me. And I must have been like 21. He was like 20. And we were talking about stuff. And I mentioned, I said, you know, I remember having a dream when we were younger. And he looked at me. And he's like, that wasn't a dream. It was like a shared experience. And then, you know, that was, that was a personal shared experience. And I kind of turned white. People would tell me, you should be hypnotized over that. Um, now, on a side note, a couple of years back, and it was on your, it was on our website, 
presiders right over here in Indian Rocks Beach, which is in Florida. A lot of people go to watch the sunset. And I remember, I remember reading an account of a couple. They were there watching the sunset with a crowd of people. And they said it was, you know, at dusk, the sun's going down. And they saw a light. And they had a humming or vibration, I think, if I remember correctly. And the wife looked at the husband, and they said it was like everybody around them froze, and nobody could hear each other. And then just as quickly as it happened, it stopped, and it was already dark. And by the time it stopped, it was already dark, and everybody just went around and went about their business almost without any memories. And that was here in Florida. Probably about six or seven years ago, I'm trying to find the account because I remember reading it. Um, but it's curious. I, I just, I don't know. You know, I, I, people bring up drones. When you're out at the beach, you'll see a lot of sky lanterns. And you can watch people on the beach think that those sky lanterns are UFOs. They don't all go crazy. But people will be like, look at them. Like, what the hell is that? You know? And most of the time, they're sky lanterns. Same thing with drones. A lot of those videos, when you watch a video, people are watching a drone. They could be freaking out. One person goes, UFO, UFO. Everybody watches that. But if they could focus on it for 20 minutes, because they took their ADD medication for the day, <laughs> if they watch it for 20 minutes, eventually the battery goes dead, and that drone has to land. But in the 90s, I don't know, I, I, I tend to believe it unless you have other evidence, which I think you're going to show us. Yeah, so, so you're saying you believe the kids. You, th you think that this was legitimate? I think the kids had a legitimate experience. Okay, all right. Whether it was a UFO or not, uh, I don't know. But if they're all drawing the same thing, or one person drew the same thing for all of those kids, that will never know. Yeah. So again, notably, like like they had thirty thirty drawings, and they only kept ten or eight or what, right? So I mean, you know, th those are the ones we see. So who knows? Uh, you know, maybe it's like you know, you're getting them from a six year old, and it's just not right. It's just not, not legible but we, at all. But but anyway, how, you how get do the we point. explain how do we explain Fatima and the vision of Fatima? How do we explain that one? Yeah, lots of people saw that. Lots of people saw that. Yeah, I don't know, and and, and that's part yeah. of this too. Is that uh, it, it, as as we always talk about on the show, it's a it, the the lines kind of blur between these religious experiences and also uh, in some cases these UFO uh, situations, right? Visitations or even abduction type stuff. Like Tom DeLong said, Tom, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. And I think there's hot spots. No, I think there's hot spots. I mean, if it was Africa for a time, there was hot spots. You know, the United States gets sightings. Canada gets sightings, but maybe they show up in times of emotional distress. Maybe these kids were out, you know, like you said, it was kind of in the bush or the brush. I don't know what was going on in that area at the time. Exactly. Yeah, you I don't know? know. Exactly. Same here. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I think I agree. I, I'm willing to say they saw something. I'm not willing to say that aliens showed up and tried to communicate with these kids, right? Uh, you would expect, like, if that's the case, they would maybe try it again, right? Somewhere else, we'd so we, maybe maybe we'd have like a an epidemic all over Africa, uh, describing similar instances, right? Maybe the aliens uh, are trying to get the word out by you know uh, reaching our children, right? Which would make sense. I mean, that that makes some amount of sense. But you would expect them to repeat it. You can't just do it to sixty kids and. You know, I don't that's uh, again, right? Some things th there's some things that also don't add up, but I'm with you. I'm, I agree something happened. What exactly that was, I don't know. Willing to say aliens, I'm not, I don't know, right? I'm, I'm going to stop just short of that and say that something I'm with you, something happened, what it was. We're not going to say mass hysteria either. I don't, I don't buy that. I think that's a, a way to explain this stuff away easily. I don't buy that. Like I said, ever in your life have you seen mass hysteria, right? I see that some funerals, but it's a funeral. Right. So, okay. You know, can, can you explain people, what one that person, looks like? Well, you know, one person starts crying, and they all start crying, and you, and you got to put chairs out, or you got to catch people because they pass out, you know, and that's in the culture. 
Hispanics. I mean, I, I'm half Puerto Rican. My mom goes to a funeral. You know, she's already ready for all of it. But you might get one person that cries, or if it's traumatic, if it's a young person, anybody. But I've watched it firsthand. You know, not from supernatural, but maybe from the trauma itself. You know, not like the lights flicker, like there's a ghost in the funeral hall that everybody flips out. Um, although I've had, had things happen, but um, not in front of the mass public or the general public that might be there. So I've seen it, you know. Um, seen it at the beach, you know, if it's a dolphin or a shark, you know, and some kid screaming something. Not that it's like everybody's running off the beach like Jaws, but we do tend to follow the crowd. We do tend to do that. That's, that's just human nature. A lot of us, or maybe most of us on the show, tend to question the crowd. So. Yeah, so maybe. As long as, questioning, <laughs> as, long as we don't question things and get you know, and, and end up getting hurt in the process because we're kind of late, like, oh, that's an asteroid. Nah, it's not an asteroid. Nah. Oh, shit, it's an asteroid. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, so maybe we're gonna we're gonna drink some maybe juice here and say that uh, it's juice. possible. This is possible, right? Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go with that. Definitely, definitely. Um, anyway, it's a good topic. Uh, definitely, even if it, you know, even if if something happened, if it was measured, if the government could measure the results. Uh, the psychiatrist and the psychologist, those results would be used for some kind of warfare on the public in the future. So, if something came of it. Exactly. As a gain of function. Exactly. So, so I think it's time that we watch yeah. out. But, okay, but, but do you agree, though? So, ju- just, for, just for a quick example before you go, if there was ever a time for, like, mass hysteria to be endemic, don't you think it'd be now with this whole COVID bit? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, right? Hell yeah. With COVID, the meat, the, 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 you know, I'll give you an example today. I will give you a total example, okay? And you know that this is true because I sent you a copy of that certificate, if you remember, I of do. my funeral home. I do. Okay. So on the news today, if you look, so you know I'm not bullshitting you, they turn around and they turn around and they say, oh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine again. There's cases of Gilliam Barre syndrome. So I, you know, I, I focus on the news and I'm trying to listen and they go, oh, there's about a hundred cases of Gilliam Barre syndrome. And I say to myself, this is totally blatant trying to scare everybody. Whether you're a vaccine or not, here's the thing. You could get Gilliam Barre syndrome from any vaccine. That's one. Okay. That's one. Two. Out of the millions of shots for Johnson & Johnson that were given out, if you're only reporting about 100 people getting Gilliam Barre syndrome, you're trying to scare the public. I just can't understand that one day they want you to get the shot, and then the next day they're telling you not to get the shot, and that's causing hysteria. That's causing doubt. That's causing everything. Pretty soon, you won't believe what your eyes say, and you shouldn't at this point in time because we have deep fakes and everything else gain a function. Where does that go? That's a good question. That's a good question. And you're right, the flip-flop of the media. But, it, but the thing is, it's all fear all the time, right? And so not only that, like, like if ever we've, in, in a modern lifetime, in the last hundred years, if we've ever had a moment of uncertainty, like we did this past season, you know, let's just call it a season for lack of a better, you know, exact term here. But, <laughs> but right, like, it's, mass, it's, it's like literally like mass hysteria central. We should all be passing out and vomiting and having seizures, Right. I don't know, like, like, like again, I, I don't know, something doesn't add up, right? Like, again, you know, the, the, the stringent school requirements, and like, a, like I said, in South Korea, they're, they're notorious for that as well, but they don't have mass hysteria there. It, it doesn't, it, well, some, it something doesn't make sense. But look at the mass hysteria here. Well, let's give a good, like, you know what's a good example that we haven't covered? Toilet paper. What happened with the toilet paper? That's true. That's true. That's true. Well, how, how much of a, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. The kids seeing a UFO, I would value that opinion. And the dumb, the, I hate to say it, than the dumb asses that hoarded all, all, the, all the toilet paper, right? Absolutely ridiculous. 
hoarding toilet paper. That was mass hysteria. Okay? Uh, mass hysteria here in Florida. The weather can't talk. It's going to be a tropical storm or a hurricane. They closed everything down. On one end of it, if they don't make you panic and the thing is bad, you're screwed. If they make you panic, gas gets raped, they hoard gas. We, we have mass hysteria all the time. All the time. When we look at that, you know, when we think about it, like we're having conversation now, we're all focusing on a UFO, but mass hysteria actually does happen every day. And why? Because of the media. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that, exactly. That, mass hysteria, mass hysteria was GameStop. Mass hysteria is Wall Street. Mass hysteria is buying something up. It's following the crowd. We have a tendency to do that, and we do that really well to our detriment most of the time. All right. Yeah, you can point point made. Point made. Uh, that's a good, fantastic point with the toilet paper. <laughs> if that's not mass hysteria, <laughs> nothing is, right? Yeah, but but okay. It's, it's, it's different once you get people vomiting and having seizures, right? Like that kind of crosses a weird line. Anyway, I, like not, not to not to continue busting your balls about it, but you know what I mean. Like I'm with you. Like I, like yeah. I described the Beatles concerts and the, the people passing out and stuff. But I, I I don't know. Like, is there a distinction between the two things? Between like a physical, like reaction like that, like a like a actual seizures or you know buying toilet paper. You know what I mean? I, I think. Well, uh, I think there's a different emotional response. I'll, I'll try to give you an example of that. It's a good question. But I made the joke about evangelical churches. Is it really the Holy Spirit? Is it an actor that gets that started in the church? Because they all start passing out. And we're here watching TV going, I don't see no Holy Spirit. Okay? But there's an emotional trigger. And the media, I mean, we know with the media is the emotional trigger for toilet paper and all of those things. But then you have the pastor that could be the emotional trigger for this spiritual experience. But the result is still the same. I don't know what happened at that school. Okay. Um, maybe, like the Oracle of Delphi, maybe gas was released and they didn't have a mass hallucination. Who knows? Who knows? We know that that happens. We know that there was a town uh, I forget what the town was, but we know there was a town that uh, a bubble broke out of a lake of methane. I think it wasn't suffocated the town. So I don't know if these kids felt lightheaded. I don't know if these kids had something in the air. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Not that I saw, but but, but again, yeah, right? Yeah, there, well, there are more. You know, there, yeah, there are more things that kind of. If you can't quantify them, then uh, who, who's to say? Who's to say? I'm with you. There's the original video I found of the aerial I linked in the chat that's taken down. So anyway, I appreciate it, my man. I know I, I twisted your arm, kept you no longer problem. than you were trying to. I appreciate the phone call. Thanks for listening. Uh, stay safe, okay? God bless you and the family, man. Have a good night, guys. Thanks, Joe. You too. That's Joe from Florida. Good stuff. Our, uh, our resident of mortuary guy, funeral home director, and uh, he's got some uh, some good stories about... Uh, about about uh, you know funeral homes and ghosts and some things that have happened to him there. So uh, he's told us in the past. Um, let me see. I'm trying to find this real quick. Uh, so there's there's an actual uh, situation here where so okay. So the guy that actually went and tried to investigate this. Okay, um, his name is. Let's see. Let's uh, just just to kind of throw this into the mix here. Uh, the the actual investigation goes like this. Let's see. This is from UFO Insight, which is a fantastic website. Tons of good stuff there. I'm going to link it here in the archive so you can actually follow along. Uh, looking here from you guys, 702-957-1037. Do you think that this stuff is actually mass hysteria, or do you think that uh, they actually saw saw uh, an alien, right? I mean, when you start when you start kind of putting things in those terms, it uh, it definitely is, uh, is weirdness, right? It's weirdness. Yeah, that link is unavailable because I was uh, trying to find the video that was taken down the aerial school that was taken down from earlier that's the one from from back in the day that's gone now it's been it's been removed from youtube let's see um so uh, john mack dr john mack is who we're looking at here so dr john mack is actually uh the the guy from harvard a a world renowned um uh, a um uh, psychiatrist is what he was. All right. And so he actually went out there and he, he, uh, spoke to the children initially right here from this article. Uh, so the Cynthia Hind along with Dr. John Mack would speak to the children individually. 
each would share the same details. In Mac's opinion, he was convinced of the children's sincerity and of the authenticity of the case. He would state of the witnesses, quote, they describe these events like a person talks about something that has really happened to them. He was equally convinced the children were of a sound mind. Many of the children who claimed to have received telepathic communication from the dark figure who stood in front of them would have some interesting revelations. Uh, regarding, uh, uh, here we go, here's, here's what one witness said about the tele- te- telepathy, the telepathic communication. Uh, one witness said, all of a sudden it was just like imaging going through my head. A message, telepathic communication. Another child will tell Hind and Mac that aliens had arrived to, quote, tell us we don't look after the planet properly. Another even darker view came from another witness. They claimed they received images in their minds of the end of the world, where all the trees would go down and nobody would be able to breathe. Right? You see? So there's some, uh, so, so again, different, different cases from uh, different children that were there. Uh, that had different, uh, quote, telepathic experiences, right? And it was very, um, it was very, uh, I know, I know it's unavailable. Uh, uh, Sorry, just reading the chat now. Yeah, yeah, it's unavailable because that's the one that was, that was broken. But anyway, okay, so, uh, so then uh, here's, here's the weird part, right? So this, this John, Dr. John Matt guy, he's, uh, he does all this. And uh, in the same morning, uh, something, uh, something over the skies, in Zimbabwe as well. So others were similarly sympathetic by the events as told by the children. And the BBC uh, bureau chief for Zimbabwe, Tim Leach, for example, would also met and interview most of the children who witnessed the bizarre events that morning. And he would do so in the immediate after aftermath of the sighting. He would state that the incident and the accounts of the children who witnessed it gave him a new perspective on life, the universe and everything. So is that just a politician talking or is that a guy that was like, oh, crap, maybe this is real. Right. Uh, so there were apparent explanations offered by the pyrotechnic display, uh, which was the UFOs. In fact, a meteor shower, they said. However, there were multiple accounts from other witnesses of these fireball-like vehicles over the region that day. So here we go. Now, it ends up that this individual, the John Mack, this guy who ended up um, speaking to the children, and uh, the, the, again, Harvard, uh, world-renowned psychiatrist, he believed them. He thought that they weren't putting him on, that they weren't making this up. He actually thought that the, something legitimate happened, and he was believing these guys. But now this guy, John Mack, in particular, as somebody mentioned in the, uh, the chat earlier, uh, he ended up dying in a car accident um, in, let's see, what was it? What was it? Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. How many years later? I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's see. I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it and get back to you guys. Here we go. The efforts of Cynthia Hind. Would, would, let's see. Uh, there we go. In fact, she wrote an article about the incident before her death in 2000. So both Cynthia Hind and John Mack are passed away now. And uh, he died in a car accident. So, so as some have, some have suggested, is there a conspiracy there of uh, trying to cover this up? I don't know. I don't know the, the actual... Um, uh, the the uh, whatever's happening with that I don't know I don't know if that's a cover up or proof of a cover up or any of the rest of this stuff but uh, I don't know I think that's I think that's the weirdness part of this is that you kind of can't tell um, exactly what's going on because e- even remember this even in when we have sixty two witnesses describing mostly the same thing we still have this bizarre uh, ish right like uh, everything's not exact some got telepathic messages some did not some drew pictures that looked like a saucer some did not some said they saw the aliens some did not so even within the 62 people that saw these things um, and still stick to their stories you know 30 years later however long this has been it's still uh, right. We still have this uh, this weird weirdness with people and uh, remembering things, or you know, the human experience, right? Where our brain is maybe not as right as it could be with uh, you know, remembering situations. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe we fool ourselves. But but again, sixty two people, mass hysteria. I don't know. Like again, if you go through a, a through that through that uh, that list of mass hysteria in Africa a, around the same time frame, it's all kinds of different stuff. It's not UFOs for most of it. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so uh, we're still taking your phone calls, talking about this aerial school thing. What do you believe? Do you think that they actually were uh, uh, saw aliens, or do you think it's something else? Do you think it's a mass mass hysteria as they've described this, or? I have no idea. I don't really know. I don't really know. I, I, I think that um, my, me, myself, I don't like, I, I agree with Jennifer again here. Uh, Jennifer says this, and I agree. I don't like that they called this incident mass hysteria. I think it was possibly an experiment. The agenda was for the story to be told, though, but I don't think the other accounts of the region were. 
because of course this is the one that got all the press this is the one that was worldwide renowned right this is this is the one that you ufologists including us are still talking about but again you go back to that uh, that paper uh that describes all these other ones and it's uh, they're different but they're you know mass hysteria just the same so i don't know this that's the question tonight and uh the question is uh, we kind of go forward thinking about these things as you never know you never know it's uh, it's one thing for somebody to say i saw an alien damn it and you're like okay that's cool right but uh, what 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 caused you to see the alien? You know what I'm saying? Not maybe you saw the alien. Maybe uh, you were fooled by a prankster, right? Maybe uh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Not that things can be described away so easily, but that's the point. So anyway, looking here for you guys. What do you think about this? Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven at troubleminds.org. Billy says, don't forget there were multiple witnesses from the surrounding area as well that saw fireball UFOs, and that's true. And then so some people have said that the, there was a meteor shower that kind of came through with a few of them, and that, that explains that. So you see how it's weird how there's always like an explanation to kind of like, oh, no, no, no aliens. It's a mass hysteria and some, some meteor shower, right? That's what's going on here. Weird stuff, weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, so uh, video doesn't work. That's, that was the broken video that uh, is the interview that I couldn't find. Uh, all right, uh, take it easy, Ronald. Thanks for hanging out with us. All right, so uh, let's, go to, uh, let's go to Jay. Let's go to Jay. I'll give Jay a second to mute up, and we'll bring him in here. Uh, we got uh, we got a little bit of time for you guys. If you have a, a thought on this, what do you think? Do you think they actually saw an alien that night, or do you think that there was some sort of um, bizarre mass hysteria situation? Or uh, as we suggested, as Jennifer said there, and I kind of possibly agree, in the in the. Uh, Gain of function area. It's, it's impossible to say, right? We'd have to be there. But let's go to Jay in New York. Welcome, Jay. Welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Great, Mike. Thanks. You always make that easy. Right on. <laughs> right on. Um, Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you had me going like three different ways today. Someone put in the chat, turning their brain to black goo. I just, you know, I've dealt with lots of Boy Scouts and stuff like that. You know, they see a bear or something crazy out in the woods and you can tell when they're bullshitting you or not, you know? Yeah. Because there, I mean, there's stories, but that video that, um, Richard put up in the very beginning of the show with the interview with the German subtitles or Swedish subtitles in the bottom of it, those kids were sincere. You know, they were interrupting each other to, yeah, they were like this. No, no, no. They were big, you know? And then, yeah, yeah, that's the way they were, you know? They were bouncing all over the place. They weren't really asking them questions. It was the whole group of kids telling the story. If you were going to fake that, that'd be hard. That'd be hard. You know what I mean? Yeah, because kids that'd are all That'd be a hard place. thing to do. Yeah. They'd blow it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's no way you coach 60 kids to tell the same story. So, so that's, again, right. there's some compelling things here. And that's, and that's part of it. Is that, again, something definitely happened. What what that was, I think, is probably open to the interpretation here, and why, and why we talk about it, right? And not just talk about it, kind of talk about it in terms of uh, what went down, what are the possibilities here, right? And so, again, the official explanation is mass hysteria. Um, and let me ask you, have you ever, ever seen or personally witnessed a mass hysteria situation where we're talking about people passing out? Uh, kind of contagiously uh, vomiting, yeah, seizures, holding toilet paper, just holding toilet paper, right? Exactly. Yeah. Or, or like you know, like like again, like the best I have is like the you know people passing out at like a Beatles concert. Like that's all I got. But I mean, for this to be happening all over Africa, kind of in the same time frame, it definitely hints at something else, doesn't it? I'd I'd wonder if it's still happening. So if it's still happening in Africa. Um, maybe, right? I'd be willing to maybe open my mind to that possibility, but I don't think so. I don't think mass hysteria happens that way, where school anxiety leads people to vomit and have seizures and pass out. Like, that's that seems ridiculous, right? That seems ridiculous. Um, a, a little bit, it does, you know? I mean, I've seen it before where, you know, someone boots on the floor in a bar or something like that, and then you see another person, like, try to, mm, I'm not going to make it. You know, but other than really simple stuff like that, you know, 60 people saying they saw basically the same thing. I don't know. And then back up. Didn't anybody ever walk around to get like pictures of the ground or anything where the kids said they saw these things? That's that, that, that's um, an interesting question. So I, I know MUFON showed up. Uh, the There's an actual particular MUFON person that... Uh, there's the uh, the phone line dying, so I'll uh, I'll dial that back. But yeah, so I did, but I didn't see the actual MUFON investigation itself. 
So I don't know. That's a good question. I would assume somebody went out there to try and see if there were prints or, but again, right? Like if, if, if they Perhaps found purple. something, yeah, exactly. But if they found something like that, let's say like uh, impressions <coughs> where maybe the, uh, uh, salud, where they found the, uh, the actual, uh, you know, craft indentations of the landing gear or, you know, little footsteps of, you know, little feet type of thing for the aliens. I, I'm, I'm sure if they found that stuff, that it would be all over this story, but it's not. It's uh, conspicuously absent, right? So, so that's a good point. That's a good point because MUFON was there. And um, I don't know. I don't know, man. That's the weird so part. So they had somebody like projecting this great big huge thing and then, you know, microwaving their brain or whatever they do. I don't know about to, that. I don't know about that. But, I mean, why would you do that? I mean, if you were going to do that on purpose just to see if you could do it, what would be the purpose in doing it? Um, Did that come out in English? Yeah, yeah, no. I so I think I think the thing is that if so, this is the type of thing they do, right? Like, like generally speaking, you have to test things on you know smaller populations of people and you know less less conspicuous parts of the world if you're going to be able to use these weapons or tests on you know here, right? Or you know, New York else. City, exactly. Mexico, or, 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 Tokyo, yeah, even even Mexico City, you know, places like this, like just highly dense populations. And so very much like we could we could kind of describe something like Havana syndrome as part of this as maybe like as a gain of function exercise. You use it in like an embassy where, um, you know, it's you're not going to affect a, a ton of people. It's more like a controlled experiment. You're like, OK, tell our guys to get out of there and send them to the movies tonight. We're going to turn on the machine for a couple hours and fry the diplomats that aren't at the movies. Right. And then, you know, and then see. And then it's like it's a small test. And that's why they would do it in these particular areas, I would think. And Or you just want to get rid of those six guys because they know too much and their rank on his shoulder isn't high enough. Who knows? Maybe they pissed you off. Like, you never know. But but still, like, that's how you would test these sorts of things is that you would kind of do it in these, uh, you know, out-of-the-way areas. And uh, so I don't know. So my, my mind is open to all those things because – who knows? Like, I, I, I'm not calling 62 kids liars that have now grown into adults and st- stand by their story. Like I said, it's difficult for me to just be like, nope, these people are lying. Because you never know. Like, you never know. Not only, sure, fine, they could have seen an alien that day, right? That's, again, within the realm of possibility mm-hmm. as we're discussing this. But then also, there are other possible things where they may be a stretch as well. But, I mean, we're we're stretching the limits here of the conversation anyway, so... I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, like, again, I, this is not the answer show, so <laughs> we're going to keep asking questions. But uh, ha- had you heard of this aerial school encounter before tonight? No, no. Today was the first day. Okay. Okay. So so it is one of the most like famous in uf- ufology and uh, visitations and that sort of thing. And it's one that gets cited, I think, in that James Fox movie, The Phenomenon, which they just recently released. I haven't seen it because I try not to watch that stuff because it just makes me mad. But uh, uh, I think somebody was saying that they, they featured this particular incident in that movie. And it's one that's cited a lot as you know a compelling case. And I agree. There's a lot that's compelling about it, though. It's not just the fact that it might be aliens, right? I think that's the thing here. Those kids saw what they saw. Yeah, yeah. You know, th- those kids that were in the interview, I think it was a year later, and they had their pictures and stuff like that they were showing. They were holding their own pictures. You know? Yeah. that was. Those kids saw what they saw. Whether it was the Luma guys that do the arts festival up here in New York shining something off in a moggy section in the woods where the swamp gas was letting off or something like that that all made them i don't know we need to start taking care of the planet that's the one that gets me you know yeah why didn't like you said why didn't they ask for legos you know why was the one that that's what they came up with because that one was back in the 80s right the yes. one that the that were so you know, those kids didn't have the internet or any of the stuff. I mean, think about how far we've gone since the 80s, you know. Why would they be concerned about the planet? That wasn't even a real thing, you know. Well, there was, there was the, the acid. Well, this was 94, actually. I'm sorry. I'm going to correct myself. But remember, in the 80s, there was the acid rain scare. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> and what else? was you weren't, there? you weren't supposed to go outside and play in the rain. I remember they were worried about that, you yeah. know. 
Exactly. Exactly. There's the phone number, 702-957-1037. Uh, phone line is back up if you guys want to join uh, Jay and I. I'm going to uh, hang on to Jay here for the next 10 minutes as we do the out, uh, the J-Tro, the outro with Jay. So, uh, But we are taking your calls if you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. Still talking about this, right? Uh, and this is exactly a Night Stalker picked up uh, exactly what we were putting down, what Jennifer kind of described earlier. And maybe this, this is possible as well. Uh, either mass psychological testing of kids, or aliens may be interested in kids too, right? And and so kind of kind of throwing it out there is, I think we have to be open to all of these considerations because you never know. It wouldn't be beyond you know uh, even not let's say non government entities to be able to try and fool people or do these psychological tests on on folks. MK Ultra, like Jennifer was describing, things like that, right? So you know that technology that uh, the brainwash stuff got out from the government. And so who's using this stuff now is kind of the question, right? And who would, you, who would do it in Africa? And, right, I mean, I don't know. I, I definitely, I, I'm with Jennifer. I don't buy the mass hallucination stuff, the mass hysteria. I don't buy that. I, I, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think it's a convenient way to describe a way something that's, um, that's, uh, that's more difficult, right? More difficult to describe. So that's what we're talking about tonight. But uh, I don't know. So, so you've never actually seen mass hysteria in person, AJ? Never seen it other than I've never, I mean, other than, you know, you know, kids start freaking out thunderstorm or something like that. You know, they do get their, you know, panties in a bunch. Actually, I was a member of a church of God when I was a kid and it really freaked me out because someone started talking in tongues one day during church and then, yeah, stuff like that. But I don't know. That was just what people were thinking. You know what I mean? You know, it was just, I don't know. Your mind is a, probably the most unbelievable machine on the planet and we don't probably get to use but a bit of it that we know how you know exactly there's looking- weird stuff that goes on i mean you can calm people into the same way you can calm them down you know one-on-one level the kid that doesn't want to jump off the cliff with the rope to do repelling for the first time if you're calm demeanor and come on it's that easy you just have to take one more step and then you're on your way Hold on tight. You know, <laughs> you, no, you don't have to hold on. I mean, you're talking right. about kids. They only weigh like 75, 80 pounds, the weight of the rope underneath them. They actually have to pick the rope up to get it to go through the thing. The rope is the belay. It's kind of cool. Yeah. They're only going to fall so fast anyway. Exactly. Yeah. That thing's uh, not twice, you know. Yep. 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 Uh, good, good stuff in the check as I appreciate all the, all the thoughtful stuff out there. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think this is a, this is, this is a compelling case for a lot of reasons. And obviously, uh, well, let's not let's say not obviously for for a whole bunch of different reasons that uh, you would expect, right? Like the the ufologists and the, that crew is like, oh, you know, uh, aliens, right? I don't know. I'm I'm not so easy to go to aliens, but remember, I'm not crapping on that idea either. I think it's possible. I think I think you know clearly if UFOs are real, what's piloting these things, and if they're if you know. You guys know, like I've said all this before, I just I, I want to make clear to that. I know we got new folks in the chat, folks who, uh, you know, don't uh, maybe don't understand what we're doing here. It's not to say these kids are liars. It's not to say I don't believe it's aliens. It's not to say this is MK Ultra. It's to say consider all of the things right before you make up your mind. That's what that's what this conversation is. That's all. So just uh, just uh, just as a. As a, uh, you know, kind of a reminder that we're not here telling you to believe anything in particular, just kind of going through some of the things this could be. Um, so, so yeah, uh, this, this is, again, compelling for a lot of reasons. So we got a few minutes left if you guys want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. Do you believe the kids at aerial school, uh, 1994, do you think they saw aliens or do you think it's something else? Uh, again, it was explained away as mass hysteria, and uh, I, I'm not buying that. I, I, again, I, th- I think the easiest thing to do when you look at stuff like this is you're like, well, what's first, what's the official story? And they tell you and you're like, okay, well, let's just throw that out. <laughs> because That's not it. That's not it. Right. And then you go from there. Right. I, that seems to make the most sense about uh, kind of a, a lot of this stuff is because uh, you, you were right. I mean, if it's, the, if it's the official story, we'd just be getting our information off Wikipedia. Right. <laughs> this is the official story, but uh, no, uh, no. Uh, no, it's not. That's, let's throw that out and then go from there. Um, yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, Night Stalker says maybe getting people to see all the same thing is the goal, and that could be. That could be. Um, uh, who knows? Let's see. Uh, what's uh, da, 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 what else do we got? Good stuff in the chat, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. All right. So, uh, so I don't know, Jay. I don't know. If you got to boil it down to a couple guesses here, what do you? What would you? What would you suggest? 
What do you think the odds are that these kids saw aliens? I would go with aliens on that one. Okay. So if I was betting, you know, odds, evens, whatever, I'd bet those kids saw aliens. It just seems like that would be a bad spot. And then the little bit that you read from the other article that about other people seeing fireballs in the sky and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Again, like I said, we weren't we weren't there. We're working on limited information, and the information we get to is is bound to be twisted and spun because it's UFOs, right? Like everything that comes out of that like that network is just is just laundered, man. It's just laundered for a you know for a narrative, and I think that's the thing that like uh, is is most frustrating about like the UFO community is they kind of don't right like like to consider the other explanations right it seems to be more of like the binary well you know was it fake or was it real aliens or no aliens right it seems that's the problem i see in it is that okay so the kids didn't see alien it was some crazy experiment to see if you could get 60 kids to think the same thing and tell them to save the planet because we're polluting it and that was your goal so what else are you covering up if you're trying to you're practicing on kids and you want to do it in a bigger area. What are you trying to hide? The real aliens? Yeah, or somebody the mentioned fact that the asteroid is right there floating over our head and any, <laughs> it's going to hit us in like four years or something. Yeah, exactly. You know? And here's, here's another one too. Somebody mentioned this earlier and this is a good point. And if you brought it up and I, I, I missed it, uh, correct me, but somebody in the chat earlier said that why would, uh, let's say if this was like a psyop of sorts, and we were trying to fool the kids. Why would we give them a message that's like contradictory to what we're doing, right? So the governments of the world are basically shitting on the planet, tearing it up, you know, oil in the water and all this other business, right? They're just, they're, they're destroying the planet for profit. But why would, if that was the case, wouldn't they send, like, Joe, was it Joe that said, send, maybe send the message of Legos or, you know, something more, more, uh, more or less not political, right? More or less not uh, uh, kind of um, talking down to the way we run the planet, right? Uh, so I think I think there's a contradiction there as well, that if that was the case, or maybe that part was made up. I don't know. But, but I thought it was a pretty good point. Well, I mean, I like it. I mean, I like the point. I mean, we probably ought to take care of the place that we live a little bit better than we're doing now. Exactly right. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not saying go as drastic as we have to go, but, you know, but... Yeah, put your stuff in the recycling bin instead of the garbage bin. Easy. <laughs> do that. <laughs> re- 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 sure. Don't throw stuff down on the ground so it gets in the river. Yeah, you know? right. Uh, it's 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 easy to do uh, to do to do the right thing, right? Uh, it's it's become more and more easy for stuff like that. Uh, reduce your waste, right? Uh, don't 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 spend so much energy. I, I do all that as much as I bitch and moan about it, right? Like like I I'm not. Again, you tell me Al Gore's doing that, right? He's not like that's that's. I bet that's, you he's not coasting up to when when you come around the corner and stuff like that. You know, do you hit the gas all the way to the red light, or you just give it enough gas to coast there? You yeah. know, him and his SUV fleet is probably flooring it to the light. Well, yeah, with, you know? with their police <laughs> escort or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so, right. So, so that's my point. So, I, so I'm not mad about like conserving things. Like I think we should. I think we should be responsible citizens of the planet. But. Uh, you know, when when the elites are like, well, you know, you guys, you plebs, you dirty, unwashed masses, you guys need to use less energy, right? It's like, wait, what? Like, you're you're the dude with the mansions. Like, <laughs> why don't why don't you sell off some of those mansions, right? Now, now, I have a mansion. Cost me twenty five thousand dollars, and half of it's still falling down. Nice. Well, you know, <laughs> that's that's a that, that's a hell of a deal, man. It's a hell of a deal. But yeah, no, it's it's an albatross. Okay, but. Well. <laughs> Well, anyway, but, yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. But point being, right, is, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you don't have the heat running 24 seven in the albatross is my, is my, is my point. <laughs> no way, man. Yeah, exactly. I'm exactly. burning firewood that people pay me to take down <laughs> hanging over their house and exactly. stuff, you know? Exactly. Exactly. It's freezing in there in the winter. It's like 50 degrees in my living room at best. Right. Exactly. It's, yeah. It's funny. It's cool kind of a great expectations kind of place you know right 
Yeah, yeah. All good, all good. All right, so a couple more. Uh, uh, read the chat a little bit, and let's finish this up. Night Stalker says, Dick Kahn, researcher that has over 700 DMT experiences, has stories where he takes DMT and his sober family sees UFOs with him. There's a weird connection. It could be both. And I've heard that, that ayahuasca bit, right, where people uh, people share the same the same uh, uh, hallucinations, so to speak. Uh, interesting. Kate says, hypnosis on a mass scale, and uh, that's another one too, right? That's another one too. Singe man, what's up? Says, yeah, they are uh, quite real, so you will see or you won't. Talking about uh, talking about UFOs, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's the thing that uh, we, we're trying to figure out here. We don't have answers. Just uh, uh, you know, uh, clearly this show is called Troubled Minds for a reason. We're not just trying to say aliens or no, right? It's a it's a little bit deeper than that with with a lot of this stuff because, yeah, ancient astronaut theorists say yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, great, great chat, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing. Let's check Facebook real quick. Make sure uh, anything great over there needs to be read. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, what's up, Nathalie? Great show. Thanks to all the callers and info. Yeah, thank you for hanging out with us. And uh, let's do it, Jay. Let's let's do the Jaytro. What do you think, bro? You got a uh, you got a. Uh, I'm ready. Yeah. You're ready. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. Ready. All right. What, couple, why couple wouldn't more. I be? Uh, well, I'm just asking, man. I'm just giving you an out in case. Uh, Lewis says DMT opens your consciousness and activates your pineal gland, so your vibration gets higher. There we go. What's up, Game Vet 2 Break time. You're just in time for the JTRO outro. Let's see. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to play, uh, play a little bit of music, and we'll finish this sucker up. Thanks, Jay, for hanging out with us. Thanks for listening. Thanks, everybody else, for uh, being out there and uh, doing your thing. Uh, all the thoughtful chat, being cool to each other out there. Let's play. Uh, let's go back to the beginning and play this. Go right ahead, sir. Please stop overthinking life like you have to have the answer to every feeling or situation. That's not how life works. We'll figure it all out just by living. By messing up, by missing an opportunity, by seeking advice and not taking it, we will learn what's important and what isn't. Sometimes we have no idea what to do and it's scary, but it's okay. Always trust your gut and know that everything will work out exactly the way that it's supposed to be. It always does. Relax. We're never in control anyway. And that's one of those ones that showed up unknown. But I liked it. Who, uh, who who wrote that? Do we know? It says unknown. Unknown. It came from inspiring and positive quotes. Nice. Was, uh, unknown. That's where I found it. I like it. it by, it's by an unknown. I like I it. I found out a lot later in life that uh, one of the unknowns that it was was actually Mother Teresa. It was getting passed around all over the place was unknown. I, I don't... Whoever said that was kind of cool. Nice. You know. All right. All right, good stuff. Good stuff as always, Jay. Appreciate that. Everybody else, uh, thank you for all the great calls tonight. Thank you for all the great chat, all the thoughtfulness, and being cool to each other out there. And uh, thanks for listening. Uh, spread the word. Let people know that uh, uh, the, the world we live in is not a binary straw man. Uh, there are uh, greater possibilities that we may consider when we uh, talk about the woo-woo or the not-woo or the aliens or the not-aliens. Uh, there may be some nuance to that conversation. And so we try and uh, spread sprinkle some of that in and not be uh, the more predictable UFO types. So anyway, I thought this was a great case to talk about tonight, the aerial school. We haven't done it yet, and so uh, it was in the news. I thought, uh, why the hell not? We should probably do this at some point because uh, we talk about it like nobody else talks about it. I can guarantee you that. And uh, go back and listen if you didn't believe me. If you don't believe me, yeah, we do. So anyway, thanks again for all the great chat, all the great calls. Uh, Thanks again, Jay. You're the best, my friend. Uh, Let's finish this sucker up. Parting words. Parting words. Love everybody. Give a big hug. The guy that called in and said he just wanted to give all of us a great big hug. You can't give everybody a big hug. Give somebody a hug. There you go. We just we need some love. There you go. That was Jack. I agree. Spread it around. And uh, you guys know the drill. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific doing more Troubled Minds. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday coming up. And uh, good shit. Good shit. Thanks again. Let's get the hell out of here, Jay. Let's get the hell out of here. At the end. Good night, Mike. Good night, man. Be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. <laughs>